Hey there guys, and welcome back to a brand new Flip Pick Live show. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have something cold to drink. Three ice cubes, no more, no less, and a big bowl of popcorn, or something salty to snack on. I wish I could eat popcorn as I do these, but it might get really fucking annoying if I'm chewing popcorn and trying to talk to you guys for two and a half hours. So either way, once again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys are having a great night, and an even better night, by looking at my disgusting face. But thank you for doing so. Uh... Let's just make sure the audio is working well before I dive into... Are joining me? Oh, it is. It's working good. Okay. Hopefully, um, the audio works. I don't glitch up. It doesn't freeze. And my phone doesn't make any more noises. Uh, we have a few main topics I want to talk about, and we'll dive into those in just a second. And then after that, we'll do what we always do, and I'll answer anything and everything that you guys have. But the first topic I want to talk about is uh, Wonder Woman. So if you guys have any questions, topics, get those in right now because I want to read your thoughts on that. Um, there's a few uh, super chats I want to answer very quickly before we dive into the main topic so I don't miss them. And uh, where are we here? Oh, yes, uh, the Z Review, he said, uh, have you ever read Michael J. Fox's books? That's a very... There's something weird going on in the Matrix. I feel like there's a glitch in the Matrix because that is the most random question you could ever ask me. But oddly enough, two days ago, I was reading an excerpt uh, from one of his books because for some odd, I'm a weirdo. So late at night, what I do is I'm a Google freak. I'm addicted to Google. I want to know everything about everything. So I start researching random topics. And that was one topic I researched. And I was curious when Michael J. Fox first noticed symptoms that he had Parkinson's and I wanted to know that I was just like when did he discover that which movie was it on uh, and uh, it was during Doc Hollywood back in like 1991 so anyway yes I, I haven't read one of his books but I have read a few excerpts from his his books uh, the Z review also asked uh, Wonder Woman 84 is the start of movies going digital and don't you worry about that we'll talk all about that in just a few seconds uh, as for the other questions, I will dive into those as soon as we get the main topic out of the way, because I, I just want to talk about this. It's, I've been waiting to talk about it for like the last two days. So yeah, the big main topic, the big bit of movie news this week is Wonder Woman 1984 was announced to go to HBO Max. Now, just on the last live stream, I was asked, do I think that movie will be delayed once again? And I said, yeah, it most likely will be delayed again and we won't see it until 2021. Well, 2020 is a crazy time and anything that can happen will happen. And wonder woman 84 is coming to streaming. And I never thought that was going to happen. I was like, why would Warner brothers give away their, their guaranteed billion dollar movie to a streaming service? Nevertheless, give it away for free. It doesn't cost anything extra. Well, um, unless you pay the $15 subscription fee to be an H HBO uh, max subscriber, which by the way, when it comes to streaming services, I love the way Netflix works. Truly love it. I, I think it's a near perfect streaming service. I hate I hate Amazon Prime with a passion. Disney Plus. I once you watch everything that's on there, other than the Mandalorian, there's not much of a point. Uh, but HBO Max for me has the best film selection there is. Uh, they just have better movies. Like Netflix has more films, but for me, it's about quantity over. It's a well. It's about quality over quantity. Uh, so yeah, as far as Wonder Woman 84 hitting HBO Max, that was a surprise by me. And and the fact that it's free, it's completely free to watch if you're a subscriber. That is, that's amazing. That is, there's something about ever since AT&T teamed up with Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers is, it's like they're getting better. It's, it's like as fans, we're getting the things we want to see. Uh, you know, like it or hate it, because of AT and T joining forces with Warner Brothers, that's your, that's the reason you're getting the Snyder Cut. Like it or hate it, that's the reason it's going to exist. So that's that's just really cool. And the fact that they're giving away Wonder Woman on Christmas, well, that's that's a nice gift. So thanks, Warner Brothers. Uh, now, my biggest thing with this, uh, there's there's two sides to this. Uh, a lot of people don't like this. It it frightens them deep down inside uh, because they're afraid that this is the end of movie theaters. This is the beginning of every large movie going to digital VOD and bypassing the movie theater system. So with all that, Wonder Woman is technically going to movie theaters the same day it's hitting streaming, which I don't know why you would leave your house on Christmas to go see Wonder Woman 84 in the theater when you could stay at home and watch it on a streaming service. 
comfortably in, in your living room with no pants on. That's an optional preference I like to take. Or you can go to the movie theater. You can pay 15 bucks a ticket for you and everyone involved to go. And the, the thing, the big downside with movie theaters right now is a lot of the concession stands at theaters are are actually closed right now. So you can go see a movie, but the concession stand is closed because they want you to keep that, that, that mask on the entire movie. They don't want you taking it off to chew on your popcorn or eat your Sour Patch Kids or take a drink of your large, delicious Diet Coke. Um, they don't want you doing that. So a lot of the concession stands are closed, which that kind of takes away from the experience of the movie theater, in my opinion. So it's, it's one of those things. And now, do I think movie theaters are going away. Well, I feel like for the next six months they are, uh, because every great movie is being delayed until the, the, uh, the summertime of 2021. Um, and so as far as that argument goes, will will this be the beginning of the end for movie theaters? I don't think so. I mean, when it comes, when it comes to Warner brothers releasing this, they had no other options. What, what, what other option was there? Okay. Let's put it into theaters. There's like five movie theaters open right now. It's going to make no money at the movie theater. Uh, or we can wait another six months, maybe another year because I'm sort of a pessimistic person. And I feel like every movie that has been delayed until the summertime, or at least the springtime will probably be delayed once again. Or they could just say, you know what? We want more subscribers. We want to make everyone happy. Let's just release this, our our billion dollar guaranteed movie for free on HBO Max. And you know what? HBO Max, I salute you for he who is about to die. Uh, Now, I definitely think this will bring more subscribers to the service. I mean, it has to. Now, the question is how many will it bring? And from a financial standpoint, how much money will this actually make them in the long run? I think it's going to bring, I mean, even if it brings a million new subscribers and the subscription service costs about $15 a month. That's still not enough to equal $1 billion that they could have made at the theater. Uh, but we will see. I, I think if anything else, it's a very interesting time and I hope it does well. Uh, so here's the, th- the other thing is if a lot of people don't torrent this movie, if everyone's not a complete asshole, and you get HBO Max, you pay your $15, you get to watch a brand new movie in the comfort of your home with your family. Um, if if everyone doesn't torrent the movie and illegally download it and the movie turns a decent profit and Warner Brothers looks at this and they say, oh, wow, that, that was sort of worth the time of doing. That, that only means more movies will eventually release on VOD or streaming services rather than wait another six months to a year to finally see in the theater. Now, if studios could release their movies in theaters, they would do it. But that's not really an option right now, unfortunately. And it seems like every day things are getting worse once again. I know where I live in Columbus, we actually have a a, a curfew right now. Yeah, we have a curfew. Like, what am I, 12 years old again? I'm not allowed to leave the house after dark? I just want to go to my friend's house. I'll ride my bicycle there, and I'll be really careful, Mom, I promise. Uh, but as far as uh, our curfew goes, it's it's sort of bizarre. It's between the hours of 10 o'clock at night and 5 o'clock in the morning. So it's between the hours of where most people are sleeping, and you can still pretty much do everything you typically would do. So I don't really understand the purpose of it, but it makes everyone feel better, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about this. I I'm I praise the fact that Warner Brothers is releasing this to HBO Max on Christmas. It's going to give everyone something to do. If you didn't already have HBO Max, this is a pretty enticing option. Uh, if I didn't already have HBO Max, I would go get it just simply to watch Wonder Woman 84 at home and then do a movie review on YouTube. Um, and the other thing is, uh, if you actually have AT&T internet service and you have over one gigabyte speeds, you get HBO max for free anyway. That's what I have. So, and I've worked with HBO max in the past. I did a sponsorship video for them, by the way, this is not sponsored. Uh, I just really like the streaming service. Uh, I've always been a fan of HBO. It's always had my favorite movies on it. Once again, this isn't sponsored. I assure you. Um, but yeah, it's, I think that's, that's really cool of them. Um, so let me know what you guys think about this. I am really interested uh, did I have something else I wanted to say about this? Oh yeah. The other thing is, do you guys remember when Mulan came out to Disney plus? Not only did you have to be a subscriber of Disney plus, you had to pay 30 fucking dollars 
to watch Mulan, which was just a really bad, boring, mediocre movie. I'd much rather watch the animated version any day because it's superior uh, from every every um, my computer just glitched. Okay, anyway, so yeah, that was thirty dollars for nothing, and now you get Wonder Woman eighty four, one of the biggest movies of the year, for free. So. That makes me happy. I, I'm sorry. I, I would rather watch it on streaming right now than wait another year to see it in, in a movie theater. And that's not even a guarantee. I mean, how many times can you delay the same movie over and over again, get people's expectations and hopes up, just to slap them in the head and say, no, wait another six months. Maybe it'll come out then. So good on them. Rather than delaying it for a third time, they said, just enjoy the movie, guys. Have a good day. I don't know how you could get, I, I don't understand how anyone could be upset by this. I really don't. So let's see what you guys had to say. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for a question that relates to the topic whatsoever. Hang on here. Let's see what you guys had to say. HBO Max sucks, no 4K, no Atmos. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you have an Atmos speakers, it matters. If not, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think the picture quality on HBO Max looks pretty damn good. Um, as far as no 4K goes, I still think it looks really good. Um, and I don't have 4K Netflix. I don't, the only 4K I really have, actually, no, rarely, no, I don't actually watch any streaming movies in 4K, to be honest with you. I downloaded Bill and Ted's uh, newest movie on 4K, but even then, the 4K I downloaded um, or streamed, I streamed it in 4K on Amazon Prime, I believe, and I didn't think it looked all that great. Uh, so, and that's just to be expected with streaming. Even the 4K picture quality isn't that mind blowing to look at. That's why you have to own physical copies of 4K. That's the true 4K. There's no bitrate compression and shitty audio. Uh, Patrick John says, with all the technology we have, I'm surprised we don't have some anti-piracy software. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. It's just, my motto is with people who torrent and download movies illegally, those are still the same people who typically never pay for movies. Like those are the same people who are going to watch a shitty handy cam version of Avengers Endgame rather than go pay the $10 to go see it. Uh, typically speaking. Or at least all the people I know of. HBO Max also said, at no extra charge, throwing shade at Disney+. Plus. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's all good on them. Like, no extra charge. Just download our, our subscription service for $15. Cancel it the month after you get it. Uh, also, I believe... Now, I'm, I, I don't know if they're going to do this for sure. I'm only assuming. You can get a trial version of HBO Max. And I wonder if they're going to turn off the trial version... In the month of December. Specifically just for the Wonder Woman 84 release. Because if you can get a trial. Go watch the movie for free. And then cancel it. And they didn't get any money from it. Then that's sort of a lose-lose. So I, I don't know if they're going to keep the trial version active in December. I, I, would, I would imagine not. So. I ain't paying for HBO Max. Laugh aloud. I'll watch it on Cinema HD. Well you go do that man. I hope you enjoyed at the cinema. Um. I really do. Not many are open and that's not really an option for many people. But if that's your preference to watch the movie up on the big screen, Hey, that's awesome. Go for it. I will probably just watch it at home comfortably on my couch on Christmas day. As I eat Christmas cookies and drink chocolate milk and the smell of cinnamon is in the air. Oh, that's what I want. All right. Uh, DJ run a one, 100%. Yes. HBO max will cancel the trial. That would only make sense from a ba business standpoint. You can't really give the movie away completely free. Like you got to make something for your $200 million movie or else that's just a really bad business decision. Uh, tenant review slash thoughts. I've talked about tenant on every single live stream for the last three months, every single one of them. So if you go back and watch any live stream, you will get my overall thoughts on tenant. But with all that said, the Blu-ray is coming out, and I will do a dedicated review to make you happy. 
In my country, there is no HBO Max. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, man. So I guess you'll just have to illegally download it. Uh, if you have no other options, do whatever it takes, I suppose. I also read one article, and I could be mistaken, or the article could have been uh, a typo. It said in the article that HBO or um, Wonder Woman 84 was going to be released slightly early in some other countries before it hits uh, HBO Max. So that might be an option for you. I, I don't know if it's going to be a theatrical release or HBO Max. I don't know. Uh, HBO Max will do what Disney did when Hamilton streamed on Disney+. Plus. That's a possibility. Uh, the other thing is, speaking of movies hitting streaming, uh, Soul, which was like my most anticipated upcoming Pixar film, is actually hitting Disney+. Plus. And the good thing on Disney is I think they learned from their mistakes with Mulan. They said, you know what? We can't charge you $30 for these movies plus your subscription fee. Here, watch Soul around Christmas time completely free, which was a good move on Disney. So this is all great news. This just means new movies, actual good movies to watch at home uh, rather than wait another year to watch them. And it's going to be a very interesting. It's just it's a very interesting time. It's like. How well will these movies do for these subscription services to gain them new subscribers? Will it be beneficial? Will it be worth it? Uh, only time will tell. I, I hope it is. I really hope this just gives them more options to release movies right now rather than wait a year. I mean, you can only have such a backlog of new movies going into 2021 until it becomes almost too much competition at the same time with all these other movies competing with each other the same week. Because if that happens, that's just bad business for everyone. You can't have three major movies every week coming out because then the box office returns are that much less for every movie. It's a crazy time right now. It's like the wild, wild west. It's just like anything that can happen is going to happen. All right, guys. So those are my thoughts on Wonder Woman 84 hitting HBO Max. I like it. I'm excited for it. Uh, I hope the movie's good, uh, but either way. All right, let's dive into your random anything and everything questions here. Where am I even at right now? You guys are killing it with the, the Super Chats and the Streamlab questions, so thank you very much. All right, let's start here. So, by the way, I'm about 17. I'm going to be about 17 minutes behind on your questions because I just babbled on for a very long time. So here we go. <laughs> Winners go home and... F the prom queen. Uh, what did you end up doing with the Resident Evil gift? You plan on doing a white elephant with it? Uh, I have the I, last week. I did an unboxing of the entire Resident Evil franchise in 4K. I have it back there. It's actually on the shelf. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I kind of want to keep it because I like the way the box set looks. Um, or I might. I don't know. It just depends. Maybe I'll give it away to a friend for Christmas or something. I'm not sure. I'm I'm just not that big of a fan of the Resident Evil movies. Like, I only really like one of them, uh, and I don't imagine I'd ever take the physical copy of any of the Resident Evil movies, pop it in, and watch it. I just, I don't see myself doing that. Chris Wilson, hey John, I'm looking forward to seeing Wonder Woman as well, but I have to admit that I wish they were releasing Dune this way instead. Thoughts? Well, see, the thing is, if you're going to release any major release coming out to a streaming service... You need to release the one that has the most broad appeal. Uh, not to say that Dune doesn't have a fan base going into it because it's based on a novel or a novel series that did very well. But the thing, if Wonder Woman can't do well in streaming, no movie can do well in streaming. This is the true testament to see how well a new movie can do on streaming. If, if this isn't successful, then nothing else will be. Uh, so I think this was this was all or nothing. For, for Warner Brothers. Uh, this is a true test. This isn't some $30 low-key movie. This isn't some unknown movie. This is like the ultimate movie that already has a, a, a previous movie out. It has a built-in fan base. And this is a true test. Like, they're really going for it. Um, so I hope it does well. I hope they get a lot of subscribers for it. Um, and maybe they'll come out with something else in a few months. Uh, so... I think this was I think this was the perfect movie to first release to HBO Max. But who knows? Anything is possible now after this. Maybe maybe Dune will hit HBO Max. I don't know. It could happen though. Uh Landon Lee, name a prequel that was better than the previous film. 
Name a prequel that was better than... Name a prequel that was better than the previous film. Uh, I, I mean, I guess... Uh, Prometheus was a prequel. That was better than Alien 3 or 4, in my opinion. Uh, so Prometheus would be one. Uh, I'm sure there's like probably 500 other prequels um, that I'm not recalling right now off the top of my head, but I'd go with Prometheus on that one. I loved the concept of Prometheus. Some of the execution during the second act of the movie and some of the third act I didn't really like as much as I wanted to, but the overall concept was phenomenal. I just wish they explored the concept a little bit more than just forcing in a xenomorph. Uh, Benny, would you take the red pill or the blue pill? I would just take both and see what happened. <laughs> I don't know. You know, probably which one was the one where you, you live in reality? Was that the red pill where you live in reality and the blue pills where you live happily ever after in your made up reality? I feel like nowadays many people would probably take the uh, whatever pill it is that you live in your happy place, especially in 2020. But for me... I liked, I, I'm a realist, so I would like to live in that cold spaceship with Morpheus, uh, with the Sentinels trying to kill me every five seconds. That's where I would like to live. I, I'm just one of those people that I would like to know the truth, so I would probably take that pill. I know Kung Fu. and but Plus, you can program things into your head. Like, you could learn how to do Kung Fu in a matter of seconds. Yes, please, I'll do that. Uh, Joshua Garrison, how do you feel about Christmas Vacation? I think Christmas Vacation is by far the best vacation movie. It's one of my favorite quintessential holiday movies of all time. It's a really good movie. And the scene where they spray uh, like the slippery stuck, uh, the slippery like uh, grease cooking spray on the bottom of the sled and he goes down the hill. That's phenomenal. I remember one time uh, we were sledding uh, at a park across the street from my house as a kid and I don't remember, I feel like my dad or my uncle or somebody had like had some Pam cooking spray and sprayed it on the bottom of our sleds telling us that we're, go, we're going to go that fast. That was sort of a blatant lie, but I do remember that. Night King 01, I've only used Prime to watch the James Bond films. Funny that you say the James Bond films on Amazon Prime. I put out a tweet just a few days ago with my experience of trying to watch uh, one of the original Sean Connery films on HBO prime. And when I went to click the movie, it like all the graphics, the titles and everything worked, but the actual movie was just like digital fuzz. And then I would fast forward the movie and the picture would look right. And then as soon as I stopped, it would be digital fuzz. I always have issues with Amazon prime. I remember uh, a while back, I tried to watch Apocalypto. By the way, one of the most underrated films directed by Mel Gibson of all time. I tried to watch Apocalypto, and Apocalypto has uh, has captions. It has subtitles because the movie is in another language. But the subtitles on the movie were like five minutes behind of what the actual dialogue was. I was like, thanks, Amazon Prime. I always have issues. And plus, there's something about Amazon Prime where they, I don't know if maybe the the rights, the usage rights are cheaper if you get the unmastered versions of movies. But a lot of the movies I watch, especially catalog titles from like the, the early 90s or the 1980s, the, the streaming movies that they have from that time period, a lot of them just look like complete ass. Like they're, they almost look like a VHS copy was recorded with a camera and then placed on Amazon Prime. These just look so rough. Like, the DVD versions are slightly restored and remastered. They don't look anywhere that rough. But something about Amazon Prime, they always show, like, the really bad version of a movie. Uh, Cody Gill. Hey, John. Wondering if you heard of Ice Nine Kills, the horror movie, themed, and I think you would like them, especially American Nightmare, based on Freddy. I have not seen... Ice Nine Kills. I have not seen that film. Uh, another movie I wanted to see um, coming out. Uh, it was the uh, the Fat Man with uh, Mel Gibson, where he's like an assassin, but he's also Santa Claus. Did that already come out, or was that coming out later this month or early December? I felt like it was supposed to come out by now. I guess I could check Google and find out. But I wanted to see that. That just you just reminded me of that for some odd reason. Uh, Carter Lovejoy, as much as I'm worried for theaters 
reaching their death, I'm I'm more worried for physical media reaching its end since streaming is taking over. That is true. I mean, right now, since everyone's at home, streaming is more popular than, than ever. But the other thing that's doing well, surprisingly, uh, are physical copies of movies. Because not everyone has streaming services at their house for whatever reason. I've noticed every time I go to Walmart... Uh, and maybe there's some kind of shipping issue or, or manufacturing, manufacturing issue, but I've noticed a lot of their movies, DVD movies, especially are, there's a shortage of them at the store. Like typically where you would see 500 copies of a certain movie, I only see one or two or none. Uh, so I feel like physical media is actually selling better than it has in a very long time. So, uh, I hope it stays around forever because it just streaming is good. It's convenient, but if you're a true anal retentive asshole who's sort of a cinephile and you look at every single pixel on the screen and you hate compression, well, physical media is the only way to go. G Money X, thanks for the super chat, man. Much appreciated. You didn't ask a question, but thank you nevertheless. Uh, Cody Gill, hey, John, what celebrity would you take on a vacation? Hmm, that's a great question. And I know what you're trying to do there. Um, I don't know. Maybe... Uh, what celebrity would I take on a vacation? <laughs> hmm. Oh, do I want to be entertained? That That is the question. I don't know. You know, maybe Arnold. I would like to take Arnold on a vacation to watch him puff his cigars, show me how to bicep curl, and just tell me stories. That's who I would take on a vacation. That or, that or Nicolas Cage. Once again, just someone who can just tell me some life stories and entertain me. Uh, Claudia Rogojan, did you look for that Punisher cameo in Spider-Man 2? No, I did not. I No, I did not. Mm -mm. I remember you telling me about it, but I never went to look for it. Uh, Benny, you can't leave after 10. How is that lawful? I'm not. Did I say I was leaving after 10? Where did you get that from? I'll be here as long as you guys are. How's that? So don't you go dying on me now. Carter Lovejoy. Best Buy in my area is limiting their movie slash TV selection to a few new releases and stuff like Steelbooks, which pisses me off. Is it the same for your area? You know, I, um, I noticed, okay, so this, I went to a Best Buy down the street from my house. I noticed their selection of movies was pretty decent. They had a large selection. But I went home uh, to Indiana the other week, and my Best Buy there, their movie selection was like 10 feet long, the aisle was, where it used to be like three aisles that were each 30 feet long, and it was a very small selection. There wasn't much to pick from. There was very little catalog titles. Uh, yeah, that was a very, yeah, they did limit the selection there, but the one by my house still is decently uh, stocked up with movies. And it pisses me off, too. Uh, James Dosier. Hey, John, are you doing anything for Black Friday? No, I'm not. Uh, the thing is, there's no real there's no real Black Friday this year. They just they're sparsing out deals throughout the entire month of November. Uh, and you don't really know what you're going to get. And as far as movie deals go, I haven't really seen anything that was worth even getting in the car and going to the store to buy. I've been to Walmart a few times this month and I didn't really see any deals on movies whatsoever. Uh, unless they're hiding or they're coming out maybe a little bit later. And as far as Black Friday goes this year, I don't think there is a technical Black Friday. It's sort of like the entire month of November's Black Friday or new deals every week. So I don't feel like there's really a need to go out on Black Friday. If there was, if they were having good deals, I would go. I don't, I, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the unwashed masses, okay? I wear my mask. I have a whole bunch of hand sanitizer. And every time I enter a store, I just hold my breath the entire time. So, but with that said, I'm probably not going to Black Friday, but I want to. Uh, Ethan White, Johnny Flick, you got to go see the movie called Blood Ties with Clive Owen. The acting and directing is phenomenal and looks like 1974. Blood Ties, that sounds so familiar. Let me look that up now. I, I feel like maybe I did see it. Let's see. 
Blood Ties has a 6.5 on IMDb. It came out in 2014, and the uh, synopsis is an ex-con tries to pull away from a life of crime, but the temptation proves too strong. I've seen that movie before. Uh, but you said it feels like the night. Ooh, it is a time period movie. Okay. That, that looks intriguing to me. Clive Owen did so many movies between like 2008 and like 2015. He did like a lot of like straight to like DVD movies, especially I remember. So it was sort of hard to keep up with Clive Owen movies. Uh, but yeah, that, that sounds intriguing. I'll check it. Check it out. Uh, Roman Bryant. Are you and Stuckman going to collab soon? We have no f- plans to. I don't know. I would. Uh, but no plans officially. But I would be open to it. He just doesn't. I don't know. He just doesn't feel like he's into it anymore. That's just my my take on it. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, the next one. Uh, a train 98. Hey, John, who wins justice league or the Avengers? Probably the Avengers. But then again, the justice league has Superman and he is the, he's almost too mighty. Isn't he? <laughs> um, that, that's a tough one because Superman really is the most powerful, isn't he? Now, which one do I like more, film-wise? The Avengers. Uh, Isaac White, glad to know that I'm not alone. I really love HBO Max, and what would you recommend off the top of your head for me to watch on there right now? What to watch on HBO Max right now? You can watch, I don't know, you can watch some TV series. I'd probably go watch The Sopranos if you've never seen it. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, And as a kid, I remember watching the uh, TV series Oz, which takes place in a prison, And I remember as like an 11 year old kid watching Oz every night and it just like screwed me up, I think. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, go watch the Sopranos, man. Uh, Balloon Raccoon, your thoughts on Kristen Wiig as Cheetah. Would not be my first casting choice. Now, Kristen Wiig is a comedic actress. I think she's great. I I, I think she's really funny. Um, but there's, I don't know what it is. They always try to like shoehorn those type of actors into roles, villainous roles. And I, I think she has charisma to her. But as far as like um, having that intimidation, that screen presence of a villain, I, I guess we'll have to wait to see the movie, but it would not be my first casting choice. If I was going to cast someone to play like the role of Cheetah in a Wonder Woman movie, uh, I would probably cast like Charlize Theron. I, I think she would fit the role a little bit better and and, and really uh, have that believability of being like a villain you can take serious. But maybe Kristen Wiig will surprise all of us. I, I'm not sure. Bastiel, uh, hello, John. I just saw the Swedish vampire film, Let the Right One In, for the third time. The film is so different and fascinates me every time. Let the right, let me double check. Let the right one in. Came out in 2008. I want to say I have not seen this. Wasn't there a... a was there a remake of this or am I crazy? Yeah, there were. Okay. I did see the remake of let the right one in. That's what I thought you were referring to for a second. I was like, that's not a Swedish film. Uh, so yeah, I have seen the remake, uh, but I have not seen the original. The remake was okay. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, I didn't see the original man. So sorry. Uh, Jordan. Which of these canceled comic book movies would you have liked to see the most? James Cameron's Spider-Man, Darren Aronofsky's Batman, or Edgar Wright's Ant-Man? I would like to see all of them. But if I had to pick one, I would probably go with... Ooh, that's a tough one. It's definitely between James Cameron's Spider-Man or Darren Aronofsky's Batman. But the Batman we got by Christopher Nolan was everything I wanted it to be. So it's hard for me to say, I don't want that to exist um, because I can't imagine anything else. Uh, the, I think James Cameron possibly directing a Spider-Man movie in the nineties would have been pretty amazing. And if anyone could do it, it would be James Cameron. I think he would have gave it everything he possibly could. 
I think that would have been unique to watch. Um, so if I could have one to go back and watch right now, I'd love to see a James Cameron Spider-Man movie from the 1990s. That would I would love to see that, actually. Uh, so probably that. As far as Edgar Wright's Ant-Man, Ant-Man, for me, I'm, he's not one of my favorite characters or Marvel heroes. I like Edgar Wright. I like like the flavor he gives his movies and the, sty- the style that he gives them. But I just think maybe his style, um, or at least uh, what Marvel was trying to do, maybe it was a bit too much. Um, so maybe, but definitely the Cameron Spider-Man flick. I think that would have been the most interesting one. Uh, Mason Arnold also, uh, speaking of the James Cameron Spider-Man flick, I believe it was rumored or maybe it was officially said that, uh, James Cameron wanted Arnold to play Doc Ock. And just for that alone, that's why I would want to see that. And I know what someone's going to say, well, Arnold did play a villain once and it was Mr. Freeze, but this would have been different, you know, (laughs) uh, Mason Arnold, I know you're a fan of kick-ass as a fellow fan. I'm telling you, you should definitely check out the kick-ass comics. I did look into a few of the comics, probably back in 2010. I read maybe, maybe like one issue and they were definitely way more graphic than the movies were. Uh, I do remember that. Like, if you think the movie's rated R, go read the comics. Trust me. Uh, but yeah, I just, I'm not a big comic book, um, reader. I'm just, I'm just not, um, I haven't really been in a comic since maybe I was a kid. Uh, Lucas Blue, are you getting vaccinated? I will tell you this without going into conspiracy theories, I won't be one of the first ones in line, but I'm also not one of the ones at risk either. You know, I, I, I think if you're at risk and you're afraid to go outside, go get it and I'll see how it works out for you. Uh, and I hope it does work. I, you know, I, I think if it's sort of one of those things, like if everyone else gets vaccinated, then why do I have to? Uh, so I don't know. I, I won't be one of the first ones in line. Now, plus they're saying with the, uh, the vaccination that you're definitely going to have flu like symptoms for like two or three days as a possibility. And, and then after that, you're supposedly good to go, but I don't know. I'll let other, I'll let other people test that theory out first. Um, in the meantime, I'll just wear my mask and wash my hands. It's worked thus far. Uh, and plus I work from home, so I don't, it's, you know, I, I don't know. I, I I think I'll be just fine. Uh, Just JDD24. Hey, John, what is your biggest example of a bad movie with a good Rotten Tomatoes score and vice versa? I know you've mentioned you're not a not a big fan of Rotten Tomatoes, but I'd like to know. A bad movie with good Rotten Tomatoes score. There's a lot of movies where people are afraid to criticize it too much. So they give it like a good Rotten Tomatoes score. Uh, And it's usually like the most mediocre movie. And you think to yourself, why is this? getting the praise it's getting or the Rotten Tomato score will actually be good. But then you read the reviews of the movie and everyone doesn't really have anything amazing to say about it. They're like, "Eh, it was was okay. It's just like, uh, I'm trying, God, I'm trying to think of one. It's, uh, there was a good, uh, I'm trying to think of a great example. Another one that got, so one that has bad Rotten Tomato score that I thought was a decent movie. And I never thought it got the, uh, the love that it sort of deserved was man of steel. People shit on that movie. And I, I think Superman Returns has maybe a higher Rotten Tomatoes score or at the time it did. Uh, yeah, Man of Steel is one that got crapped on by Rotten Tomatoes. And I was like, I don't know. I I, I liked it for what it was. Uh, l- let me, I'm trying to remember the movie. Uh, hang on. Hang on a second here. Movies overrated on Rotten Tomatoes. I cannot type. Okay, let's double check this. Here's 10 movies overrated on Rotten Tomatoes. The first one's Avatar. I like Avatar. The next one's Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, Let's find one here. Uh, I disagree with that one. I disagree with that one. Noah has a 76 on Rotten, on Rotten Tomatoes. I did not like Noah whatsoever. Um, yeah, those aren't really good examples whatsoever. Whoever made that article just wasted my time and your time, and I'm sorry for that. Oh, Jurassic World 2015 has a 77% fresh. 
Okay, here's an opinion. I didn't really like that movie at all. I thought it brought nothing new, and it didn't improve upon anything that the that the original did. That would be one. Um, Crash has a 75% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Don't agree with that at all. Um, what's the... Yeah, I'll go with those ones for now. I'm sure there's better examples. I'd have to really think about it. But that's one of those questions that I can't just answer off the top of my head. Even though I, I guess I sort of did. Uh, <laughs> the next one comes from Patrick John. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? Uh, by the way, guys, a little bit later on in the live show, I'm going to introduce a segment that I've only done once on a live stream. Uh, but it's And I've, I've, I do it on Twitter every, every once in a while, but it's called Five Flicks. And what it is, is I essentially just talk about the last five movies I watch and give you my quick thoughts on it. So it's going to be a, a reoccurring segment on the weekly live shows. Uh, and next week, uh, there's going to be a new segment called Magical and Mystical Movie Memories, where I take a stroll down memory lane and I recall some of my favorite theater experiences or my first time watching a movie, bad or good. Uh, so that'll be next week. All right. So let's get into Patrick's question. Uh, did you watch Chaos Walking Trailer? It's so bad and looks like a student film. I love Tom Holland, uh, the whole cast and director, but it just looks awful. It's been delayed for three years because of how bad everyone behind the scenes is saying it is. Yeah, the trailer looked like a straight to Netflix movie, and maybe Netflix will end up buying it and it'll go to Netflix. My thing with that that film, uh, Chaos Walking, the concept now I didn't I think it's based on maybe a book or young adult novel or, or some shit like that. Everything else is. Uh but the whole concept that I got from the trailer is <laughs> on a planet where every guy's thoughts cannot be hidden or, and are projected of every detail that they're thinking, no women exist on that planet. <laughs> Doesn't that say something? That isn't that the truth though? Like on a planet where dudes thoughts or just laid out. They keep nothing to themselves. I don't think any woman would want to live on that planet. How could they? <laughs> That'd be a scary place. Uh, so yeah, um, the concept just, I, I don't know why it exists. Uh, I like Tom Holland. I really do. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the film itself just looked really bad. It looked like uh, the, the um, uh, what was the movie with uh, Will Smith and Jaden Smith that came out a few years after Earth? Something about it looked like After Earth to me. It just, I don't know. It gave me that vibe. Lucas Bernaskowitz. Did you know the guy who played Moose, Mose Schrutz, uh oh, Moe's Schrutz, uh was a head written on The Office and created Parks and Recreation, Brooklyn 999, and The Good Place. Oh, so the guy who played Moe's was the head writer. Okay. I guess I didn't know that, but I love me some Moe's, man. If you want to make me laugh, show me any clip of Moe's from The Office. I will laugh my ass off. <laughs> uh, John Grizzly. <laughs> John, Gr John Grizzly's stomach. That's a good one. If you don't know who John Grizzly is, go watch Over the Top. Hey, John. Just got home from seeing Snake Eyes in theaters. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. Could you imagine? Just out there looking for toilet paper. Got any fun plans for Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah. Did you, did you find any toilet paper? Speaking of toilet paper, people are being stupid again, guys. People are panic shopping for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> like, they think if, if more people get COVID, somehow toilet paper magically runs out. And it's weird. Like, people buy shit that they don't really need because it gives them, like, a weird false sense of security in a situation where they have no control. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, I went to Walmart the other day, and there was, like, two rolls of toilet paper left. And I was like... Not again, not again. But you know what? I wasn't there for the toilet paper. I was there to buy some caffeinated energy drinks. That's all I really need. When these, I'll just wipe my ass with these one day. I don't know how effective it'll be, but at least I'll have them. Uh, any fun plans for Thanksgiving? I uh, we're I'm going to Amber's family's house, and um, I just want to eat some shit, man. Just want to eat some food and have a good time, and that's about it. No, no major plans. Uh, Ryman 6,000. Hey, John, what are your thoughts on only God forgives my girlfriend and I love the movie drive. I probably shouldn't go in expecting it to be as good though. So here are my thoughts with, um, 
Only God forgives. For some odd reason, when I read that, I was thinking of Place Beyond the Pines. I don't know why. Only God Forgives is terrible. It's a terrible, terrible movie. I hate it. I have a review for the movie with one of the most brutal intros I've ever shot for YouTube videos. Go watch it. There's a lot of blood involved. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, Only God Forgives was a huge disappointment. I love Drive, uh, but Only God, like the concept of Only God Forgives could have been really cool. There's, I like some of the music. I like some of the visuals, but man, it was like a pretentious story that did not need to be told and it was executed terribly and it feels like a mess of a movie. Uh, but once again, I thought you were referring to Place Beyond the Pines. I like the first act of Place Beyond the Pines a lot. The Moto Bandit, I love it. Uh, Night King 01, I watch Her Majesty's Secret Service, great Bond film. I wonder what would have happened if George Lazenby uh, would have signed on for more films. Yeah, when it comes to the original Bond flicks by Sean Connery, I am by no means an expert on those films. I've seen a few of them once, and they're... They're definitely um, iconic films I need to go watch and explore just to uh, update my internal IMDb chip so I have a little bit more knowledge on them. But like I said, I've only seen one or two of the original Sean Connery Bond films, uh, and I need to really set aside time to go back and rewatch them. So, um, And yeah, I, I, I need to watch them. I've seen the very first one, but I know, I, I think, what was it, the... Uh, is it Goldfinger? That's the. Is it from Russia with Love? That's I guess agreed upon being the best one out of the Sean Connery bits. Um, I know Never Say Never uh, was one of the worst Sean Connery ones that came out in the eighties. Uh, but yeah, I need to go watch those movies. I tried to on Amazon Prime, but it was not letting me. Uh, Cody Gill, Ice Nine is a band. Check them out. They're metal. Why did I think they were a movie? Didn't you say that was a movie earlier? You said it was a horror movie. Okay, so it's a band? Okay, I'm always looking for new metal bands. I'm always looking for, like, new awesome metal bands. And I'm always on the lookout for, like, good synthwave music. Like, someone recommended, uh, and I think it was during a live stream, someone recommended the, uh, the band Gunship. Definitely go check it out if you're in the synth wave and like 80s vibe music. I love it. Uh, Rando Commando 41, thoughts on Spider Man Far From Home. Here's the digital code for whoever wants it. Well, there you guys go. Um, I have a movie review for Spider Man. No, I don't. I have a review for Spider Man Homecoming, not Far From Home. I'm sorry. All right, so here's my, and this contains a few spoilers from Spider Man Far From Home. I, if you, I'm sure if you wanted to see the movie, um, you, you would have by now. It came out two years ago. Uh, so it's okay. I will say it's okay. My biggest complaint with it was the use of um, Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. I didn't like the execution. I, I thought they could have gave his character way more depth. And I, whenever you have an actor of the caliber of, of uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, I expect more from him. I expect more character moments. I expect more backstory. I expect him to be able, be able to chew up the scenery a little bit. And it really felt like they could have just hired any actor to play that the written role of Mysterio in that movie. I was really underwhelmed by that. I mean, I like I wish Marvel would allow um, more Heath Ledger like performances where they just allow the actor to become the character. And we rarely get that. Um, especially when the, some of the villains, uh, so as far as the, the overall concept of far from home, my biggest complaint would be really, it's just Spider-Man fighting drones. That's really the main villain of that movie. Spider-Man's just fighting a whole bunch of drones. I, I don't know. That sort of took me out of it a little bit. I didn't like that. Uh, and I was just like, yeah, I, I don't know, but I'm curious to see where they go moving forward. All right. The next one is uh, from Claudio Rogajan. Have you seen the James Bond film Moonraker? I find it fun to watch. Also, the villain Hugo Drax looks like a full size uh, uh, Tyrion Lannister. Look it up. I don't think I've ever. No, I I've seen Moonraker. Yeah, I have seen it. I it's one of the more cheesy Bond flicks. I do recall that. Uh, but I need to go back and look at the villain. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Peter Cunnington, Wonder Woman coming digital, the death of theaters, question mark. 
I talked about that early on in the live stream. I don't think it is. Uh, I really don't. If movie theaters could be open, they would be open. If they could release movies in theaters, they would do so. That is definitely the studio's preference to make more money on their return. And if that was an option, it would be it would happen. But it simply just is not an option right now. And you have to do something with these movies. How long can you make a movie, set it on the shelf, and wait for it to release with no guarantee of it coming out, even if you do delay it for the next year? And then you keep pushing the release date back and back and back. Uh, so, you know, in the meantime, if theaters can be open, I would love to see more movies hit VOD. I mean, if that's the only option to see new movies rather than wait two years, then I'll take that option. But one day, if everything does clear up and, and, and things go back to normal, the studio, the, the theaters will come back and studios would definitely prefer to release it into a theater. Um, so do I think this is killing the theater? No. Um, but do I think the theaters right now are, are sort of on life support? Absolutely. Landon Lee. Worst unnecessary twist that ruined a good movie. Oh, man. Uh, that's You're putting me on the spot with that question. Uh, that's a question I wish you would give me in advance so I could really think about it. Unnecessary twist. That's a great question. I wish I had a great answer for you right now off the top of my head. Let, let's let's go to Google and, and see if I can refresh my brain here. All right, let's see what we have here. Uh, someone said Identity from 2003. I, the twist of that movie was really lame, I will say that. Oh, God, whoever wrote this article. Oh, God. Every film is some, like, art house film that no one's ever watched from 2001. Okay. Oh, I'll t okay. I have one for you. I have this. I have one for you. So, at the time this movie came out, uh, the only reason I saw it was because I worked at a movie theater. And the only other reason I saw it when I worked at the movie theater was because I'm a lazy piece of shit. And when I worked at the movie theater, I was an usher. Now, rather than go around and cleaning up popcorn spills all day, I would go hide in one of the movie theaters and watch a movie until someone would radio my walkie talkie. John, we got to clean up on aisle five or whatever. So I would watch random movies and by some point I would run out of all good movies to watch. So I walked into a Robert Pattinson movie called Remember Me and I saw the end of the movie and I thought that is so contrived and unnecessary like, they just went out of their way. Like, it could have been any other... Like, you could tack this movie on, this ending, onto any other movie and get the same result. So, if you haven't seen the movie Remember Me with Robert Pattinson, it's just, like, this dude. And then, the very end of the movie, he's like, I'm going to go see my dad at his office. So, then he goes to his dad's office building. And then the camera zooms out. And it's, like, September 11th, 2001. And it shows the Twin Towers that morning of that's where he went like what a contrived forced ending to like get some kind of emotion out of a movie like that's just cheap to me uh benny what are your thoughts on aliens do they walk amongst us i've seen people that if they're not an alien i don't know what the fuck they are but yeah I, I believe in aliens there's i mean by listen statistically speaking in our universe there has got to be another life form somewhere out there in existence. Just statistically speaking, with all the millions and billions of galaxies and planets that lie in those galaxies in the unknown, it has to they have to exist out there somewhere. Now, will they ever come visit us in flying saucers? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I sort of believe in them. Uh, David L Larry... Have you seen Romper Stomper with Russell Crowe? Uh, I want to see he plays like a like a punk type character. I I don't think I've ever seen all of Romper Stomper with Russell Crowe. I feel like maybe one time I was at a friend's house and I caught part of it, but I've never seen all of it. Uh, but I, it's one of those movies that's on the to do list for the last like 10 years. And I, I just have not got around to watching it. Uh, James. Do you like a Christmas movie? It's my favorite Christmas movie, and it gets me into the holiday mood. Do you like a Christmas movie? Do you mean a Christmas story? A Christmas movie? What the fuck is that? 
Do you mean a Christmas story? I hope you do. Um, now, if we're talking about a Christmas story, absolutely. You'll shoot your eye out. It plays on TNT every year, 24 hours straight, and I typically watch it five times every every time it's on Christmas. I also own the Blu-ray back there. But if you're talking about a Christmas story, yes, absolutely love it. Uh, it's always weird to me. Like, that whole movie's so weird and bizarre. Like, I love the scene where he goes to visit Santa Claus, uh, and the guy, like, put, put he's on the slide, and Santa kicks him in the head, ba- or pushes his head with his foot to go down the slide. I was like, that's the coolest way to ever go see Santa Claus at a mall. Uh, Alto Voltage, um, favorite Undertaker moment. Hmm. I love, I love most of his entrances, Undertaker's entrances, entrances, especially at WrestleMania's. Uh, my favorite moment, you know, my favorite Undertaker moment actually was from, I believe it was 1999 and it was when Undertaker was in the storyline with the Ministry of Darkness and there's a Raw episode where he's about to like sacrifice Stephanie McMahon uh, and Stone Cold comes in and saves the day. That's probably my overall favorite moment. Uh, Benny, have you seen a movie called They Live? Check out the synopsis. I have seen They Live, the John Car- John Carpenter movie uh, with uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Yeah, I've seen it. Not one of my favorite movies. I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Yeah, it's, I watched it once. It was okay, um, but not one of my favorites. Night King 01, Arnold was going to be Doc Ogg. Imagine the delivery. Hey, Spider-Man, come here. I got tentacles. Yeah, it would have been amazing. I would have loved to see it. Uh, Roman Bryant, Spider-Man 4, or Burton's Batman 3? You know, by the third Spider-Man movie with Sam Raimi, I was sort of like burnt out on Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Uh, that Maybe that's just me. I mean, the third one wasn't very good. Um, and if he had his way, how much better could it have been? Probably a lot better, but... By that point, I was ready for someone else to take over. And and definitely, if he was going to have a fourth Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire looking 38 years old, I don't know. I guess that just wasn't what I wanted to see. Uh, But Batman 3, I think that would have been a much more interesting movie to watch. Especially, well, it would have been interesting. Uh, Maybe not better, but interesting. So so if you don't know, Joel Schumacher wanted to make... uh, another uh, Batman film after Batman and Robin. And this time around, I guess he wanted to make the movie a little bit darker. The movie was supposedly going to be called Batman triumphant, I believe. And Nicholas cage was going to be the scarecrow. Did you hear what I just said? Like that alone does that deserve to be made. What's the matter, Batman afraid to take off your mask or something like that would have been a, that would have been a fucking awesome to watch. But then that didn't happen, and then Roland or Joel Schumacher went on to make Eight uh, Millimeter with Nicolas Cage, and we talked about that way too many times on the live show. And by the way, guys, thank you for all the questions. I'm about 20 minutes behind. I am answering every single question, uh, but you guys know what I like to do. I like to get, give you guys some substance with your your questions, make it worth your time, and and uh, it's, I just feel like it's the least I can do. So thank you guys for the support. I'm. Getting to your questions, I'm just a few minutes behind. Uh, wine. which Survivor player went to your gym? Uh, yeah, I think, um, But so I said this on the li- last live stream. I went to a gym with a guy who was on the Survivor uh, reality TV show. His name is Patrick. I believe he was on Survivor episode, or he was only on the first episode of Survivor, or the first week, and he got eliminated. I want to say it was Patrick from season... I don't know. One of the newer seasons, like is season 19. Is that a thing? I don't watch survivor, but his name was Patrick. He has like a uh, red hair. Uh, Lucas Bernowskowitz. I'm a big fan of Mr. Freeze. <laughs> Wait, I'm a big Mr. Freeze fan. And I think he needs another shot. Would you like to see him in this new Robert Pattinson Batman franchise? Absolutely. I would. Yes. The most out of place thing ever in a movie. I would, I, that would only elevate the movie. Wouldn't it? I like your sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, Claudio Rogojan. Have you seen the video uh, on Aaron Aronofsky? 
on Aronofsky's Batman, he was going to wear a hockey mask and have a grill and work as a mechanic with a guy named Al, sounding terrible. Yeah, the Darren Aronofsky Batman was going to be a little too... Uh, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Not gritty, but just his take on it was going to be a little too downplayed for my taste of Batman. Uh, I like some of the fantastical elements of Batman. Like as far as the new one coming out, like the Matt Reeves version of Batman that I'm getting the vibe of it. That is, is, is realistic as I want to see my Batman like that. That is, is as realistic as I think it should be for Batman. Uh, any more so. And it's just like, ah, just, just go make an, a standard vigilante movie or something. Uh, so yeah, I do recall reading some of that. Also, Darren Aronofsky was attached to direct a, a new RoboCop movie. And see, I think that would be a better, better matchup for him as a director. Like, I think he could bring a lot to a RoboCop movie. Uh, and I, I would be okay with that interpretation, but don't fuck with my Batman. Don't no, no, no. Uh, the next one, Claudia Rogajan, Hulk 2003, has a positive rating, what the F. Does it? Yeah. There's some weird movies on Rotten Tomatoes that get a lot of love, and there's a lot of movies that get a lot of hate. And it blows me away. I don't comprehend it. Um, and that's why I don't go by Rotten Tomatoes scores. I just I just don't. I mean, they mean nothing to me. <laughs> uh, just JDD24, have you ever watched the movie Eagle Eye? Shia LaBeouf's performance is pretty good. I'm glad you brought up Eagle Eye. That is one of those like 2008 movies that just felt like a 2008 movie. I did. I remember watching it and I was sort of like looking forward to watching it. And I did. And I just was not into it at all. It was one of those like movies that came out and was instantly forgotten. Uh, what The other one was like uh, the Keanu Reeves movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still remake. That was like another like 2008, 2009 movie. Um. Yeah, as far as Eagle Eye go, there was an also like, what was it that came out in like 2008 or nine? It was like called Untraceable. Like that was the most generic movie ever made. There's a few others. But yeah, Eagle Eye. I thought of that the other day. I'm glad you reminded me of it. I didn't, I just felt like a waste of, waste of a movie in my opinion. Uh, Melvin D's Nuts. <laughs> it's perfect. I can see Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot. I believe that's how her name is said, Gal Gadot, uh, with my pants off. Absolutely, man. That is your freedom. That is your right. When you watch a movie in the privacy of your home, you can do as you please. Uh, <laughs> that's why I like watching movies at home. Plus, the snacks are a lot cheaper, and there's no assholes in, in, in my living room texting or talking. So, But don't get me wrong. I still love the movie theater experience when it's good. I've also become sort of a, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, when it comes to movie theaters, I almost don't go to a movie theater unless they have reclining seats anymore. Like maybe I've been spoiled, but I don't know. I can't go to like normal movie theaters anymore unless they have a reclining seat in them. It's just something about that makes, it makes it so much better. Uh, Kofi F, what would 2010 John think of our pa Robert Pattinson as Batman? Well, that was at a time before he was doing good movies. I mean, that was in his his uh, Twilight phase. I mean, that's what he was known for. That's all he was really known for. So, and plus the thing is, I think a lot of actors with a little bit of age they get better. They just look like they fit more roles. And 10 years ago, Robert Pattinson was just, he was too, he was too pretty to play Batman. You know, he needed a little age on him. So I don't think I would have been, I don't think I would have been for it. Uh, Benny, who do you think will win presidency? I, I mean, at this point, I would assume Biden would win. Uh, that's just, I guess, my assumption and everyone else's assumption. But we don't talk politics here. Why? Because it's a lose-lose situation. If I had it my way, we'd eradicate everything and we'd go back to the, the Stone Age or the Dark Ages. Whoever has the biggest bat and knows how to light a fire wins. That's my <laughs> that's what I want. What are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, Roger Irezo. Uh, what's your opinion on Spike Jones slash Charlie Kaufman's adaptation? I didn't see uh, the Charlie Kaufman film. Or did I? Hang on here.
Did I see this? Oh, being John Malkovich? Is that what we're referring to? Okay, I didn't... I've never... Okay. Here's one movie I have not seen. It's Being John Malkovich. I've always went to... I've always wanted to watch it. I've tried to watch it. I've just never got around to it. I have seen Adaptation. Um, Synecdoche, New York. Uh, I like the Adaptation a lot. I think that's one of Nicolas Cage's most hilarious, greatest performances ever given. Uh, but yeah, I haven't seen Being John Malkovich. Uh, Balloon Raccoon. Have you ever watched the Ernest movies? The Halloween one, Ernest Scared Stupid. Yes, absolutely. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Many, many years. Um, But I, I don't they kill the, the trolls with milk and squirt guns? I feel like, don't, is that what they do? It's been a long time since I've seen Ernest uh, Scared Stupid. I always remember the Ernest Christmas movie. Um, because the little elf guy always scared me as a child. And also Ernest, uh, goes to prison. I always really enjoyed, I, you know, speaking of that, I believe the original concept for the Ernest Halloween movie was much different. I think they originally wanted the movie to take place in a very large haunted mansion. And for some reason they scrapped that idea for whatever reason. I don't recall. Uh, Night King of One. Some say Goldfinger is the best Bond film, period. Yes, Goldfinger and From Russia with Love, I think, are like the, the two um, favorites when it comes to the, the Connery movies. And those are the two I want to go back and, and, and visit. Uh, Patrick John. By this point, you probably know how big of a Stranger Things fan I am. Did you see... The drop of the new characters for season four that was posted on Twitter a few days ago. I'm so fucking hyped. I need this season now. Robert England is in it. Ooh, Robert England's in it? That gets me excited. I dig that. I haven't really been keeping up on it. I'm sort of just, I'm at the point uh, to where it's just like, I'll watch it when it comes out. And I'm super hyped to see it. I loved season three. I think season three was probably my favorite season of Stranger Things. Uh, just because, because I'm a sucker for like 1980s malls and... Seeing how the whole uh, series revolved around that mall made me very happy. So, no, I haven't, I haven't seen any new updates with it. Uh, Roger Erezo, or Erezo, uh, what's your opinion on Spike? I just read that. I'm sorry. Melvin, <laughs> Melvin these nuts. Uh, I have an idea. They need to build a movie theater that has individual rooms like a peep show. You can have family rooms, too. Well, yeah, if only they took the peep shows that already exist with the plexiglass and then put movies behind them. Then we could all go and enjoy them, couldn't we? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So that would be a very expensive endeavor. And by that point, it's just like watch the movie at home. I get what you're saying. Like if in the movie theater there was like plexiglass little cubes every like four or five seats where you could sit in it and watch the theater. Yeah. Or, or here's a thought. We could just, more people could go to drive-ins. It's essentially the, the same concept. You get to sit in your car and then watch the movie up on a big screen. Uh, I would love to go to a drive-in. Uh, I was meaning to this summer. It's just, there was, it didn't seem like there were any really convenient drive-in locations close to me, but I would like to go to a drive-in. So that's what I would suggest. We do more of drive-ins. Maybe they'll make a resurgence one day. Maybe. Just JDD24. Underrated scene from Back to the Future 2 is when Marty is in the wrong house. I always found that scene funny. Yeah, I, and I like how they got a new actor to play Marty's father because Crisp, Crispin Glover wouldn't come back and reprise his role. And he's just upside down the whole movie going, I know, I know, you really know how to hydrate a pizza. <laughs> My favorite scene in the entire Back to the Future, uh, all of the movies, the one thing, the one bit of technology I've always wanted to come see actually happen. It's not flying cars. It's not giant holograms with sharks coming out of them. It's simply a small little pizza you can hydrate to make into a large pizza. That's all I want. That's all I need when it comes to technology, and I will be happy. Alex Carr. I've been watching The Big Bang Theory and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air on HBO Max over the last few weeks. If you've seen either of them, what are your thoughts? The Big Bang Theory is what I call... 
Wow. What's the, how do I want to say this? <laughs> I call it easy to consume baby food. The Big Bang, that's what the Big Bang Theory is. Now, there's some very good episodes. I, I like the nerd culture talk that they reference. I enjoy some of those things. It's definitely not one of those shows where I, I, I binge it. Like, whenever it's on, I'll occasionally watch some of it. Um, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was my go-to back in the 1990s. I remember watching that every chance I got, really enjoyed it. And it had some very, it had some real heartfelt moments um, that I enjoyed. So I do need to watch the, I know they did a reunion show on HBO Max with Fresh Prince. Uh, I, I need to go watch that. Um, but I, I always really liked the Fresh Prince. Sack of wine. Uh, <laughs> what is the best concert you have ever attended? I've, I've only been to maybe a handful of concerts. Uh, I went to Blink-182. I went to Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, I went to, back in 2003 or four. me and my friends got together and we went to see Flaw. Um, and they're like a metal band. And they were putting on a concert in this really small small venue where, uh, oddly enough, a few years later, the, the uh, musician Dimebag Daryl got shot. That's the place we went to. And it was like such a small place and everyone like there was a mosh pit and it was so hot in this building where you could like you could taste the body odor of everyone. But it was a really cool experience. Uh, so that's one of them. Uh, Balloon Raccoon quote the last scenes of the Shawshank Redemption. Oh, man. At one time, I, I think I could. I just remember Morgan Freeman on a bus saying, I hope the ocean is blue as it is as my dreams. And I just hope to see my friend again. Something like that, right? Something like that. Very moving moment. Um, Yeah, I think I got a few of those lines sort of right. (laughs) Uh, But thanks for the, uh, the question, man. Much appreciated. I always wanted to know what, what else happened after they like met up on that beach. Like, did they finish the boat? Did they go sailing? I want to know. It's just, I just, I wanted more. It's one of those movies I did not want to end. Uh, Alberto AVR, thoughts on Sputnik movie and top five space movies. I haven't seen the Sputnik movie. Uh, I, I would assume it's about Sputnik, the first Russian, uh, what was it? First Russian satellite put into space, right? Um, I, I haven't seen it. Uh, top five space movies. Top five space movies off the top of my head, man. That's... Don't make me do it. I've always, when it comes to space movies and science fiction films, I've always, I always wish there were more great classics, like smart man thinking sci-fi flicks. I I always wanted more of them. Like it, definitely when it focuses on like space exploration, um, you know, one was like the most recent one we had was Interstellar, but I wanted, I guess I wanted more from the movie, but I want more movies like that. Um, top five, I can't put together a top five off the top of my head right, right this moment. Uh, Jordan, have you ever seen The Waiting? It's a great South Korean horror movie that's scary as hell. Uh, you can find it on Amazon Prime. Oh, the, I'm sorry. The Wailing. It's called The Wailing, not Waiting. I was thinking of the Ryan Reynolds comedy movie, uh, which is really good, by the way. No, I have not seen The Wailing. All right, South Korean film. I'm always looking for good South Korean films. I mean, every time every time someone tells me to watch one, I'm always happy with what I watched. When it if it's from Old Boy to The Train to Busan to uh um What was the I just forgot the other one. But anyway, yeah, they make great movies and The Wailing. Okay, I will look into it. Thanks, man. Uh, oh, I was thinking of Parasite. My brain just forgot what the movie. Uh, oh, hi, Mark. Thoughts on new version of Godfather 3 from Coppola. Thoughts on the new version of Godfather 3 from Coppola. I haven't seen the new version of Godfather 3. I think I requested the movie to be sent to me. Um, I have not gotten it yet. And I I don't think I've seen Godfather 3 since 1995. So I, I do want to go back and revisit it. Uh, Melvin, these nuts. 
Nick Cage is Joker in the Matt Reeves version. The thing with Nick Cage is he's just, he's too Nick Cage anymore. Uh, I don't, I don't think that would be the the best casting choice. Um, but it's not something I wouldn't necessarily hate if it happened. Uh, uh, Ismail Ikeball. Hey, John. Hope you're doing well. Which do you prefer? Aliens or the original Predator? Also, would you consider Michael Keaton's top 20 actors of all time? So do I prefer Aliens or the original Predator? For me, I think the original Predator has more rewatchability. I mean, it's just such a fun movie that it just... Characters ham it up. Some of the lines... It's just one of those movies, anytime it's on, I can stop and watch it. You son of a bitch! Uh, but the original... But Aliens, the sequel, directed by... Or, the sequel to Alien, directed by James Cameron, is... I mean, that's a masterpiece movie. I mean, that's that's a damn good movie. It's a, it's a great action film, nevertheless. But for me, just my personal preference of like rewatchability, I would probably go back and revisit Predator more than Aliens. Uh, and as far as Michael Keaton being being in the top twenty actors of all time, top twenty actors of all time, I I don't know about that. I really like Michael Keaton. Uh, I like his charisma, and I think he's given some performances that can't be matched or topped, especially when it comes to like his original portrayal of Batman or Beetlejuice, for example. Um, hey, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Uh, I love Keaton. Uh, just JDD 24. Have you ever watched the movie Adventureland? I have seen Adventureland maybe once. Uh, it was okay. I watched it once. I didn't really have any urge to rewatch it again. Uh, that's the Jesse Eisenberg movie, right? Right? Yeah. Um, I remember it being okay. It just no, it was just wasn't one of those movies that I guess resonated with me. Uh, a spectator about how many energy drinks do you drink a week and do you get any bad side effects from them? That's like asking someone if they get bad side effects from drinking coffee. No, I mean, it's just caffeine. You know, you, you drink it, you consume it, you urinate it out. It's, it's not going to kill you. Uh, as far as energy drinks go, I would say I drink maybe one a day. I probably one a day. Some days, maybe two, depending on how frisky I'm feeling and what I have to do that day. But I do have a routine. Typically, um, Every time I do a YouTube video or a live stream, I usually drink an energy energy drink. So, and by the way, guys, thank you guys, everyone right now watching. I think we have 363 of you magical people watching. And if you could, it just helps the stupid YouTube algorithm. And I would appreciate it. Uh, is just give the video a like right now. If you're watching, that's all I ask. I do much appreciate it. Um, and typically if you like my video, the YouTube algorithm thinks, Hey, you, you, you're, you want to watch this again. So uh, that way it shows up in your sub box a little more often and doesn't get uh, suppressed by YouTube. So if you can give the video a like real quick, please, please do it. Do it. Do it now. Okay. The next question. Cody Gill, horror themed band. I think you'll like them. Yeah, I'm all I'm all for that, man. It sounds awesome. Like Cradle of Filth is another scary band. There's some of their music that if you listen to on a dark, rainy night, it'll terrify you. But it's also really enjoyable to watch or listen to. Sorry, uh, Joseph Parnell. Thanks for the super chat, Joseph. Uh, you didn't ask a question, but much appreciated, man. And thank you so much, Joseph. Uh, Shane Palmer. Hey, John. Bought Tombstone for five bucks today at Best Buy. I thought you were going to refer to the pizza for a moment there. And I was going to say, you can do better than that. Uh, uh, never saw it, but heard good things. Any thoughts on it? Keep up the great work, man. Uh, Tombstone, yeah, Tombstone wasn't one of my favorite Western flicks. Um, Like, Unforgiven, I always maybe preferred a little bit more than Tombstone. Uh, or even... um. Uh, I just forgot the name. Um, Young Guns. Young Guns is sort of cheesy and a little bit hokey, but I like Young Guns 1 and 2. It's just, it's sort of like guilty pleasure to me. Tombstone's great. Don't get me wrong. Val Kilmer in the movie was good, but uh, just not one of my favorite Western flicks. But I do enjoy a, a great, a great Western movie. 
I'd like to see Tarantino make a few more Western movies. I, I really like his take on them, like uh, The Hateful Eight or uh, Django Unchained. There's something about like that Western setting that I find so relaxing when I watch those movies. Am I the only one? Maybe. Uh, just JDD24, do you hate the Lost Sister episode of Stranger Things like most people? Was Lost Sister the one where they had... Um, Eleven go to Chicago and she slicks her hair back and wears a trench coat and it just felt like a real big filler episode that was unnecessary that took away from everything else and you really just wanted to see the kids being kids. Yeah, it it was just if that's the episode you're referring to, yeah, that was probably my least favorite episode as well. Um and by the way, guys, as soon as I catch up on these questions, I, I'm going to uh, uh introduce the new segment. Uh, five flicks where I talk about five random movies I watched this week and you guys can share five random movies you also watched this week. So as soon as I catch up on the questions, I will do that. Jack Lame in Pulp Fiction 1994, the words pulp and fiction appear on the screen. They're in reference to the fact that the movie is called Pulp Fiction. (laughs) Indeed they are, Jack. Indeed they are. I I thought, I always thought they should have called the movie Get the Gimp. (laughs) uh roger erezo erezo uh you already answered my question about adaptation and i accidentally donated twice because i'm new to Streamlabs. so here's another donation have a good stream well thanks thanks roger much appreciated man thank you for that and uh yeah you thank you guys so much your 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 donations are very appreciated and thank you so much they do help go go towards the purchase of caffeinated beverages to keep me alive. Uh, Melvin D's nuts. I'm thankful this year. We still have you on YouTube. Well, I'm thankful for all of you guys for watching me on YouTube. So thank you guys. Uh, don't get me. I don't forget you guys. I really don't. I, I know without viewers, I'm not shit. And most, I feel like most people on YouTube forget that they have an audience and uh, it kind of, that pisses me off a little bit. So anyway, thank you so much, Melvin, for the question, for the, um, the comment, man. Much appreciated. Uh, sack of wine. Can you do the president? Can you do the presidential oath? I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of president, president of the United States in a Christopher Walken voice. Here it goes. <laughs> I do solemnly swear that I faithfully execute the office of president of the United States of America. That's all I got. I'm sorry, man. I tried. Uh, Austin Rash, thoughts on Ratatouille, uh, the Pixar movie. A lot of people like Ratatouille. I think it's a great uh, Brad Brad Bird uh, animated movie. Uh, but, you know... I. I It's not one of my more rewatchable ones. Just something about like the visuals of it. I don't want to go back and rewatch over and over. I've seen Ratatouille a few times. It's a good movie. It really is. But I'd much rather if you gave me a selection of Pixar movies, I'm going to put The Incredibles in. I'm going to put Toy Story in uh, any day over Ratatouille. So those are my thoughts on Ratatouille. Jack Lame, thoughts on 8mm starring Nicolas Cage. Oh, Jack... What did you get you off or something? Uh, it, go watch eight millimeter. If you guys haven't seen it, <laughs> just a gross, gross movie. Uh, Lucas Bernalskowitz. What's a movie other than Deadpool that does a good job breaking the fourth wall? Uh, Ferris Bueller's day off does a really good job at breaking the fourth wall. When Ferris stops and stares at the camera, especially like when he's in the opening shot where he's taking a shower and, uh, just laying out like his, his life motto. I really like that. So that's one movie I think does a really good job of breaking the fourth wall. And by the way, speaking of Ferris Bueller's day off, I always go off on tangents and, 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 but, um, I love that movie that Ferris Bueller's day off was like real life motivation for me. Like, I was like, this guy has it right. Fuck school. What are you going to learn there? you like, you need to go out into society, live life it really defined me as a person. I would say Uh, 
Uh, just JDD24, you must have watched the extended version of Avatar. There's a really good scene at the beginning where Jake beats up a guy in a bar. I have seen, of course, I've seen the extended version of Avatar. I like that um, there's more footage on Earth and it shows like how Earth is overly populated and people are wearing masks. Just saying. Um, but yeah, I did like that. I, I would like more. I, like I could have watched another 30 minutes of just that. Like the opening of Avatar taking place on Earth. Uh, G money or G money, money, <laughs> John thinking of renting new mutants tonight, but should I, <sighs> how much is it depending on if it's like $5, maybe it wasn't a very good movie. I would say it's like a very choppy slop together movie that is so totally inconsistent and not that fun to watch. And it just kind of abruptly ends in my opinion. Uh, so would I recommend it from a critical standpoint? Probably not. But if you have nothing better to do with your life, sure. Why not? Claudia Rogojohn thoughts on Shanghai noon. Jackie gets high in it. I like Shanghai noon. I also like Shanghai nights as a guilty pleasure movie. I, I thought both movies are fun. I like the, the buddy cop team up aspect with uh, Jackie Chan and, and Owen Wilson. Gosh, uh, yeah, I, I liked it. Um, both movies were fun. Oh, Anthony Moose, Mouse, Moose, Anthony Moose, or I'm sorry, I can't read. Sometimes everything blurs together when I start reading. A Noni Moose, Shawshank would have been a masterful, masterful miniseries. Yeah, it could have been a great miniseries. It really could have. If you took the overall story of Shawshank and were able to write like eight episodes, each one being an hour long, oh, that would have been a beautiful thing. That truly would have been. Like you could have really dived into it and really taken their time with some of the 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 time that Andy spends in prison. Yeah, that would have been that would have been phenomenal, and and that would have that would have been a great idea. But we do have the movie Shawshank, and I think it's a masterpiece, nevertheless. Johnny Carvalho, yo, John, I'm planning to see someday movie out of my mom's basement and don't know how to cook. What did your diet consist of when you moved out? Why did I read that? Like I had autism. I'm sorry. I'm planning to someday move out of my mom's basement. Okay. And I need to learn how to cook. I'm so sorry. Um, Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, I just completely spaced out there. Okay. So if you need, I see, I didn't know how to cook when I moved out either. I'm sorry. I, I used autism wrongly. I meant dyslexic. I'm so sorry for that. I meant dyslexic. I read that very dyslexic. Like that's what I get for improper use of a word. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I didn't know how to cook when I moved out. And I slowly learned, uh, what you need to do is buy a grill. You need to start grilling outside. It's the easiest way. I promise you. So you can make burgers, steaks, chicken. Um, that's really all I know how to make along with some breakfast food, like eggs. Uh, so I'm not a master cook. I rarely cook anymore. I find it easier and almost cheaper to eat out. Uh, you, you think like buying chicken and things like would be cheaper and then you make them at home. It's not. When you go to the store and you, you buy like chicken and you have to buy mashed potatoes and you have to buy rice and you go home and you cook all this shit by the end of the day, it would have been cheaper just to go somewhere and buy it. Um, so frozen pizza will be your best friend. I promise you that. Oh, we froze again. Fuck. Okay. Hang on guys. Let's try to fix this. This happened last time, and I thought I fixed the issue. We can't have a live stream without a technical glitch. So hang on, guys. Don't go anywhere. I think I can fix it really quick. Just give me a second. I want to know why this happens. I don't know why. So bear with me for a second. I will fix it. Don't get scared. Hang on. Just one second, guys. I'm still here. Don't you worry. Let's 
trying to fix this. Okay. Uh, I need to, I wish I had the Jeopardy music right now so I could play it. Hang on. Oh, did I fix it? I think it's fixed. Is it fixed? Let me know. I'm here. Don't go anywhere. I think it's working. Let's see if it's working. Come on. Come on. Update. Update. We'll see if this fixed it, guys. Oh, there's this. Okay. I'm not. Sh Give me a second. It's. <laughs> what if you guys came back and I was just completely naked? Okay. Is it working? Everything good now? Okay, good. Yay. Okay, we're good to go. We're good to go. Okay, let's let's answer your questions here. I'll do my best to hurry up and catch up on these. Uh, Benny, these streams are great, John. Can you put the cookie down now in your Morgan Freeman impression? <clears throat> God, I can't do it. I can't yell as Morgan Freeman because he doesn't yell. Can you put the cookie down? That's all I can do. I'm sorry. Uh, Melvin, these nuts, if you won the lottery, what would you do? Depending on how much money I won, that really depends. I don't know. I would probably invest in some stocks and cryptocurrency and then buy the Batmobile. <laughs> Just being real with you. I really am. I, I would also hire a fucking great phenomenal video editor and cameraman to shoot the best flip trip videos you guys ever saw in your life. And I would also flip, I would shoot the videos in either a Batmobile or, or, a um, a screen accurate, uh, DeLorean from Back to the Future. Just keeping it real with you. That's what I would do. Uh, football. Thoughts on Star Wars prequels? I hate uh, the uh, Attack of the Clones. I hate that movie. I tried to watch it the other day. I fucking hate every second of it. I think it's bad. Phantom Menace has a special place in my heart because it's the first Star Wars movie I ever saw in the theater. Revenge of the Sith, I guess, is critically agreed upon as the best of the prequels. Um, but I enjoy Phantom Menace. I, I really do. It, it's, it's not great, but I enjoy like the pod racing. I enjoy Darth Maul. Uh, it just, it's one of those types of movies for me. Night King of one laugh aloud. The Shanghai movies are historically rush hour three or are historical rush hours. Yeah, they, yeah, they more or less are. I agree with you. Uh, they're just hokey fun, man. Uh, Melvin D's nuts. John, your stream froze. I know I fixed it. I think, uh, Eric, Eric Atkinson. Hey, John, did you happen to watch the Hulu miniseries normal people? It's fantastic. No, I did not watch that miniseries. I don't actually have Hulu right now. I think I actually can get it for free because I have Verizon or something. Uh, so I need to look into that. It's just so hard to keep up on every mini series and every, like every streaming service. At some point, it gets exhausting. Like I'm gonna watch Netflix. Okay, now I'm gonna sign out of that. Now I'm gonna watch HBO Max. I'm gonna sign out of that. Now I'm gonna watch Disney Plus. I'm gonna sign out of that. Then I'm gonna watch Amazon Prime. It's like by the fucking time you get to the fifth one, it's been five hours. Uh, Logan's, Logan's Hanks. Hey John, been watching you for a while. I'll be done with my first semester of college Monday. Anyway, have you ever seen uh, Cellier uh, from 2003 with Chris Evans? I really like it. I liked it as well. I thought it was okay. It had Kim uh, Basinger in it, right? She, I, I've just, Kim Basinger, I don't dislike her. I just don't feel like she can act that well. Uh, I liked that movie. Chris Evans, one of his earlier movies, uh, simple concept. A dude has a phone call. He can't hang up. It's sort of a very suspenseful movie. Um, and I wish more movies were made like that, like a movie that doesn't cost that much. And it's, it's definitely intense to watch. I feel like it, when it comes to that, the concept of that movie where you're on a phone call with someone and you can't hang up, I feel like you could make like 20 different movies with that same concept, but different stories. Just putting that out there. <laughs> Jack Lame, name of your OnlyFans. I wish I had one. 
Um, maybe one day. But as of right now, just follow me on Instagram, please. <laughs> or or Snapchat. I started using Snapchat again after like a year. Uh, just JDD24, have you ever watched The Family Man with Nicolas Cage? Watch it every Christmas. I, I have seen it maybe once uh, years ago. It, it kind of felt like a by-the-numbers movie to me. Um like if I'm going to watch a Nicolas Cage movie, it, it's definitely family man's not going to be my first choice. How about we, how about we watch matchstick men instead? Uh, Joseph Parnell, Rocky sit, or I'm sorry, Ricky six and a series called Freddy's nightmares. I haven't been able to find a good quality copy of Freddy's nightmares. Also, there's a movie called, Hunter's Blood and a movie called Summer Camp Nightmare. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't. Is that a question? I haven't seen any of those, man. Uh, Ricky Six. Ricky Six. Okay. Is, what's Freddy's Nightmares? What is what is that? Is that is that an actual horror movie? Is that like a documentary? I don't I don't know what it is. Uh, Melvin D's nuts. If I win the lottery. Uh, let's go on a road trip. Absolutely. I'll go anywhere you want to. If you take me, that's fine. (laughs) I mean, if I won the lottery, I could invite all of you to come to a very, very large movie theater. We could all wear hazmat suits and have a good time. How's that? We could do that. Uh, senior love daddy. What a great name. John, how big is that booty hole of yours? (laughs) Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. (laughs) Uh, Landon Lee. Hey, John, I don't want to push anything on you. Will we ever see another movie review type video on your flip pick channel? Yes. Yes, you will. Yes. Yes, you will. I promise. I know I've neglected that channel. I assure you I have not given up on it, though. Uh, Connor Bake. Connor Baker. Yo, John thoughts on inception and parasite. I have a review for parasite. No, I don't. I just fucking lied to you. I'm sorry. Parasite was my number one movie of last year. Go watch my top 10 video. Uh, loved it. Uh, inception is a movie that I loved for many years. I still like it, but I've slowly fallen out of love with it. Every time I watch it over and over again, I get just something. Every time I watch it again, it lose it loses a little bit of something. Uh, Mark Wallace, John, you get more handsome each stream. Stay golden. Well, thanks, man. I, I try. I don't use alcohol because alcohol dries out your skin and makes you look older. Uh, James Dosier, have you seen Married with Children and Frasier? Was never a big fan of Frasier, but Married with Children was my jam, dude. I loved Al, I loved Al Bundy in that show, just like a disgruntled, angry dude, middle-class working, worked at a shoe store. Plus like when I was a kid and you saw like Kelly, uh, that was like everyone, every dude talked about Kelly. I just, the concept of it was great. I loved, I loved shows about dysfunctional families. Why? Because that was my family. Like that's the type of like lifestyle I lived in and I related to it and really enjoyed it. Balloon raccoon. Hey John, your best Heath Ledger Joker impression. I don't even attempt to do Heath Ledger Joker impressions because mine are terrible. Like just really bad. Uh, uh, G G money money. Uh, it is trains, planes, and automobiles. The best holiday movie. It's definitely the best Thanksgiving day movie for me. The quintessential holiday movie of all time is either going to be home alone one or two. And I stand by that. By the way, random side note, because I just finally caught up on all of the questions. Speaking of speaking of married with children, uh, Christina Apple, Christina Applegate was in this little uh, underrated forgotten comedy of the 1990s called Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. The title of the film is very accurate, but a great movie. I highly recommend watching this if you haven't seen it and you like 1990s movies. Go watch this great movie. Uh, Mel, 
Melvin D's nuts. Heath Ledger was great in Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, him and Jake Gyllenhaal were both great. Saw that movie once. Uh, probably wouldn't watch it again. But yeah, it was the great performance by both of them. Uh, also, when it comes to like Heath Ledger uh, and underrated performances, I I feel like his his supporting role in The Patriot with Mel Gibson was was phenomenal. Uh, and if you haven't seen The Patriot, please go see it. I think it's so underrated of a movie. It probably has a shitty Rotten Tomatoes score for whatever reason. Uh, oh, this is this seems historically inaccurate. So what? Does that take away from the movie? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, really, really great performance in there. Uh, Lone Tiger. Hey, John. How's your weekend been so far? It's Saturday. It's going so it's going OK. The other day, I finally got my my garage gym put together. Really looking forward to actually working out again and, and getting a pump again. And um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do a vlog video showing you guys my new garage gym setup. I did something. I showed it on Snapchat like a week ago, a little bit of it. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it's going well. Uh, I just bought a lot of 4k movies again because of an early black Friday deal. Laugh out loud, by the way, what are you doing? When are you doing the Patreon Q and a also, when are you picking the winner for your quiet place movie? Wink, wink. Sorry. My nose is just, uh, as far as doing the giveaway contest of a quiet place and the Goonies, I will announce that on the next, on, on that Q and a that you're referring to. So I, I already did record it. I recorded it. I'm going to release it maybe tomorrow. I'll release it tomorrow. I'm sorry for the delay. So yeah, the Patreon and YouTube member only q and I'll put it out tomorrow at the latest Monday, but it, I will announce the winners as well. Also, if you follow me on Patreon or if you're a YouTube member, I have a very special vlog video I shot at Walmart and Best Buy the other day. Uh, it's just, I, I, and if you didn't already know, I shoot like little mini vlog videos, like mini flip trip videos, uh, for Patreon supporters as like a bonus for the, the support. So also look out for that. All right, guys. Uh, as far as questions go right now, I'm going to, uh, introduce the brand new segment. It's not brand new. I technically did it once on a live stream, but pretend like I didn't. Uh, the new segment is, uh, called five flicks it's basically five movies i've watched over the last week or two uh so right now if you guys want to comment the last five movies that you watched please do so we'll talk about it we'll have a fun conversation and enjoy this awesome intro made by a longtime supporter patrick john who's also a good friend of mine who lives down under uh he helped me with this intro doing some of the animation and putting it together it just it saved me a lot of time so patrick thanks very much man you're fucking awesome and uh here it goes guys enjoy the uh the new intro and I'll talk about five movies I watched this week. Ah, what'd you think about that? It gets you in the mood, right? Get you a little pumped up, gives you a little bit of that nostalgia that you want, right? I fucking love it. Uh, so anyway, uh, the five movies I watched this week, um, in no particular order, <laughs> I wrote them down here. Okay. So the first one I watched was, uh, the gentleman. And I briefly mentioned this on the last live stream and I figured I'd take a moment to really talk about it. This is a Guy Ritchie movie. And for, I like Guy Ritchie overall. I think he can direct the movie. I really do. I think he's a good director. But sometimes some of his dialogue between characters just it, it almost numbs my brain because I just feel like I, I'm it, it almost like sometimes it feels like word vomit uh, a little bit. Uh, I liked the concept of this movie. It's based on a true story about a guy who's basically a, a big time ju- drug dealer. I liked like the the small hidden uh, drug laboratory where they grow marijuana and stuff in this movie. Um, I enjoyed it but I was sort of disappointed. I was hoping to like it more than I did. I don't think I'd ever go back and rewatch this movie, the gentleman. Uh, and plus I I didn't really, there was not really a likable character in this movie for me. There wasn't one character. I was like, Oh, they're really chewing up the scenery and I love every second. All right. The next flick I watched, uh, I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for like the 10th time. Now, I own the Blu-ray, and because I own the Blu-ray, I'm going to smack my hand and say, John, what are you doing? Buy the 4K, because my motto is I buy all of my favorite movies on 4K, 
and I need to upgrade. Uh, so maybe this Black Friday, there'll be a cheap version of this on 4K. I will definitely go buy it. But for some odd reason, this movie, not for some odd reason, I know the reason. Um, every time I rewatch this movie, I like it more and more. Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, just two likable dudes. And I like Leonardo DiCaprio in this film as Rick Dalton. Just fucking chews up every scene he's in. My favorite scene in th- this entire movie is when Rick Dalton uh, is losing his shit and he's in his his movie trailer and it, it keeps having like jump cuts and he's just like, if you fuck this up, you're going to go home and blow your brains out, man. You're going to do it, you piece of shit. I just love that because I relate to it. I've been there. I've done things like that. Trust me. Uh, but yeah, this it just never gets old. Tarantino movies for me, I, I feel like with every year I still exist on this planet, I appreciate them more and more because they have so much rewatchability. I just get lost in the dialogue. And the thing is for me, when it comes to a movie, if you have great characters, I don't care what the story is. As long as you have great characters, the story can almost be anything. Uh, but anyway, once per time in Hollywood, uh, can't get enough of it. Uh, the next movie I watched, which is currently on Netflix right now, Now, I watched probably 28 minutes of this movie just to remind myself of how much I hate it. I did originally see it in theaters, but it's just the most boring, mediocre movie. It almost feels like it should have went straight to DVD, Uh, and it's Mile 22 with Mark Wahlberg. Hey, what are you doing over there? Making a really bad movie? Oh, hey, Ronda Rousey, what are you doing in this movie? Not acting? Okay. Uh, It just an incomprehensibly boring movie (laughs) that doesn't do anything great. I don't know why it was made. I really don't. Uh, So mile 22, don't ever watch the movie. The other thing I watched, what else did I have here? One, two, three, four. Did I only put four movies on here? Well, I already screwed this up. The next thing I wanted to talk about, and I know it's technically not a movie. It's technically not a movie, uh, but I wanted to take a moment because I did watch it this week. And uh, Mandalorian episode 12, I love the Mandalorian series. I really do. Uh, and it's one of those, I didn't really hop on the bandwagon until, uh, the first season was almost done. Uh, and I, I really started to, I watched a few of the episodes and I started to love them. And, uh, so when it comes to Mandalorian season two, it seems like this is the trend. They have the first episode, which is like huge and big. And then the second episode is sort of like a filler episode. And then you have the third episode where way more happens. The story progresses. They go more places. And then it's like every other episode. It's sort of like the filler episode where the location pretty much takes place in one location. And it's okay. That's fine by me. I get it. Uh, But something about this newest episode, it was directed by Carl Weathers. And and his character has a, is is, uh, one of the main characters in this episode along with, um, I just forgot the actress's name. Anyway, um, it, it's one of the typical Mandalorian episodes where, okay, in this episode, we have to go here and blow this up. Or, you know, in other episodes, we have to go here and destroy the monster. It's always something like that. And if you can accept that, that's fine. So for me, this episode sort of felt like filler with a little bit of story tacked in there. And the planet that they keep going back to or Carl Weathers character stays, it, I just, I feel like we've seen that planet so many times. I, I'm sort of getting bored by it. I'm like, ah, let's go somewhere else now. Uh, but nevertheless, still enjoy it. And uh, by the way, um, I know somebody will probably mention it in this newest uh, Mandalorian episode, episode 12. Um, there is, uh, there's kind of a, um, uh, a screw up where in the background, there was a dude in in like jeans and a t-shirt just standing in the background. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of a screw up, but in all fairness, I didn't notice it when I watched the episode. Uh, I only, you know, I, I only become aware of it because someone took a screenshot. Um, now the last movie I want to talk about, hang on here. Where is it? Eh, here it is. Uh, by the way, um, the last movie I want to talk about, and this is brand new on 4K. This was sent to me. Uh, it's Beverly Hills Cop on 4K. Now, I didn't, oddly enough, I watched this on a streaming service. I forget which one. I watched this, but then the next day the 4K showed up. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy is phenomenal. Like, it's, 
now originally this this originally I believe they wanted Sylvester Stallone to star in the movie and he had a lot of different ideas where to take this and they were like no we don't want to do that uh, so then they cast Eddie Murphy and it became what it was and then coincidentally enough uh, Sylvester Stallone went on to make another cop movie called Cobra but anyway Beverly Hills Cop great comedy movie and when it comes to the Beverly Beverly Hills Cop movies. I sort of, my biggest guilty pleasure, I, I believe, is Beverly Hills Cop 3, where it takes place in an amusement park. It's a terrible movie, but the thing I like most about it is th- they have this giant, like, gun in the movie, and it's like a concept gun where it has, like, a microwave on it. <laughs> like, there's a microwave on a gun that shoots missiles. If for no other reason you, you never watch Beverly Hills Cop, just watch it because of that. Uh, so, yeah, Beverly Hills Cop, man. I just, really fun comedy movie, and... I miss movies that just go for it like that. And speaking of Eddie Murphy movies, um, I w- actually, I want to read what some of you guys said here. Hang on. Before we go to the next segment, I want to read some, some of your guys' comments. Night King of One, I saw Ronan, Goldfinger, Thunderball, uh, and o- OHMSS. Uh, g- cool, man. Yeah, definitely catching them on some old Bond flicks, I can tell. Uh uh, see, I want to. I, I need to go watch Goldfinger right now. I'm in the mood for like a classic Bond flick. I've been in the mood for a week. Damn you, Amazon Prime, for glitching out on me. Uh, Johnny Carvalho, Carvalho, best way to pick up chicks during these times? I, the same way as always. Just go go to Tinder, man. <laughs> uh, Uh, just JDD 24 last five for me were face off were the Millers Disturbia Silence of the Lambs and Birdman that's a great lineup right there Silence of the Lambs is another movie I I truly think Silence of the Lambs has one of the best screenplays ever written I truly do like there is no wasted effort in that movie there's not something that just feels unnecessary in that movie it all feels like it needs to be there uh Good, great lineup. I like how you went from "Were the Millers" to like "Silence of the Lambs." I love shit like that. Uh, Stephen Bush. Uh, the last five movies I watched were "Rumblefish," underrated Coppola film, uh, "Videodrome," "Predator," "True Lies," and "Akira," uh, which are my favorite five. By the way, they're all great. Cool man, awesome. Uh, "True Lies," another great movie that. Hey, James Cameron, why isn't that on Blu-ray yet? Stop making Avatar movies and put True Lies in the Abyss on Blu-ray, damn you. Uh, Lone Tiger says, here are the movies I bought to impress only myself and you. Aquaman, Shazam, Doctor Sleep, District 9, Fury, Spider-Verse. More coming next week. Laugh out loud, my bank account. Well, good, man. Awesome. Um... Did you buy them on Blu-ray or 4K? Aquaman on 4K looks pretty damn good. Um, it's just it's such a vivid, bright movie. It just looks good on a TV. Shazam, good, good. Uh, Doctor Sleep, uh, District Nine. I bet District Nine looks really good. Is that it's on 4K, right? Yeah. Uh, it's into this good, good picks, man. G Money, Money. <laughs> this week I watched The Hunt. I have not seen The Hunt yet. Uh, Civil War, Shark Boy, and Lava Girl from Russia with Love, Austin Powers. Awesome, man. Yeah. Once again, need to watch Russia uh, from Russia with Love. Uh, uh, Sack of Wine, would you relive your life in the 80s and 90s, being born in 1967, so you could watch all of your favorite movies? I've much thought about that, and I feel like, depending on what I wanted to do for a living... See, I couldn't do YouTube if I was born in that time period. So that wouldn't exist, which would kind of suck. But if I was around, if I was my age in the 80s, I don't know. I honestly think I would try to be a stand-up comedian or something in the 80s. For some, I, I feel like it was achievable. Um, I don't know what else I would do, though. Professionally speaking, I don't know what else I would do. Now, if I was my age in the 1960s, I'd be Don Draper from Mad Men. Uh, Melvin D's Nuts, can you please see Clown, directed by John Watts? It's underrated. I think you will like it. It's very creepy and funny. I'll look into it, man. I'll look into it. I will look into that. 
Uh, Obed or Zaga, five movies I watched this week. Uh, one, uh, Blood and Blood Out. Ooh, Blood and Blood Out's a good gang movie, man. That's a movie that I, I think I'm. Ref- I think I'm thinking of the right one. Isn't that the one where he goes to prison and you it's just? It's one of those movies where you just never want to go to prison. Uh, Fight Club, good pick. Um, Seven, also another good pick. And Training Day and Mean Girls. Some good picks, man. I like how you topped it off with Mean Girls, though. I li- see, I like when people... See, for me, when it comes to like five movies I watch, it's such an odd variety and an odd mix of movies. Sounds like you were in the Fincher mood, though. All right. Uh... Patrick John says the Mandalorian is very old school TV show type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's, it's the gunslinger Western type show where the, the good guy goes into a new random town and saves the day and goes on to the next one. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that concept. I would just like if he went into like another small town that was on another planet that I haven't seen 15 times already in the episodes. (laughs) I would love to watch Batman 1966 4K Blu-ray. Yeah, I have the original. Um, no, did I did I trade those in or something? I The original TV series, the Batman TV series on Blu-ray looked pretty damn good. And the reason is because it was actually shot on film, not videotape like some of the 1980s and 1990s uh, TV series were. Um, but yeah, I remember it looking pretty damn good. Uh, the last five movies uh, this guy watched was Crimson Tide, Point Break, Empire Strikes Back, Gettysburg, and The Ring. Ooh, okay, good mix up. Yeah, good stuff, man. Point Break, you can't go wrong with Point Break, ever, or Empire Strikes Back. Gettys- I've never really watched Gettysburg with um, uh, Ferris Bueller in it. I, I I haven't seen that. Next one comes from Daniel Coolio. Hey John, Joaquin Phoenix as Lou Bloom or Gyllenhaal as Joker. Which one could you imagine being better? You that is a good interchangeable uh, choices you picked there. I could see either one being in either role and doing a pretty good job. I, for me, I would, I think Joan Hall as Lou Bloom and the Joker. I, I think Joan Hall as the Joker. I would, I think that would be great. I really do. I, I, but I'm glad they are who they are. Like, I'm glad Jake Joan Hall was Lou Bloom. I think he's a, he's a better fit for Lou Bloom than Joaquin Phoenix would have been. But at the same time, I could see Jake Joan Hall pulling off a good Joker. I really could. I, I think he's that great of an actor who can definitely play sort of a dark character. So. And plus, he's just one of my favorite actors. Um, ah, where are we? Come on. Catch up. Kofi uh, F. I saw Point Break 2015 for the 10th time, John. You didn't. You're fucking. You're lying to me. No one would watch Point Break, the remake, more than once. And if you watch it again. There's something, there's something very wrong with you (laughs) and, and a lobotomy will never get that movie out of my head. Uh, what a generic piece of shit movie. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, because we've been talking for a very long time, but what we're going to do next is, um, actually real quick before I take this break, I want to talk about a few new movies that were sent to me. And then after the break, uh, or during the break, you guys can submit more questions and I'll catch up on all of those. And then maybe if you want to, um, we can keep talking. You guys dictate how long I stay here. Just to let you guys know. Uh, Jenny's Reality says, uh, Encino Man, Son-in-Law, Happy Gilmore, The Flintstones, and Ace Ventura. You were definitely in the 90s comedy mood, weren't you? I love Encino Man. I love that movie. Weasel. I love it. I love how they go to like the the um, the gas station and eat like burritos and slushies. Uh, such a good movie. 
Good picks, though. Uh, all right, so real quick, here's some new movies I, I that were sent to me um, on 4K, and it goes along with the Eddie, Eddie Murphy Beverly Hills Cop movie. Uh, it's Coming to America, the Steel Book on 4K. Now I have not watched Coming to America in a very long time, and I know they've uh, made a sequel to this, which will come out one day. Uh, but yeah, just nice Steel Book. I like it. It was this was never one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a few that are, but the Steel Book looks really cool. I, I, I imagine it looks really good on 4K. The next one is actually a Blu-ray, The Golden Child. Now, this is the type of movie I grew up watching over and over all the time on HBO. And um, this movie really, like, there's, a, in this movie, what they do is they, they hide blood and oatmeal and try to kid it to, like, they try to feed it to the golden child to get him to consume the blood. And something about that visual of oatmeal with blood in it turned me off from eating oatmeal for a very long time. But other than that, really, I've always enjoyed The Golden Child. Uh, Trading Places. Now, this is one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies. Not not enough people talk about this with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy, where Eddie Murphy is essentially a homeless dude who uh, gets a chance to get all this money offered to them, offered to him. Uh, and, and it's all because of like a bet going on, uh, where basically they take Dan Aykroyd's character. Who's like this pretentious uptight asshole character. And they put him out on the streets. Just a great phenomenal. If you've never seen this eighties movie, please go watch it. Highly recommended. And uh, just some of the things they do in like eighties movies, they weren't as PC as they are today. So they could get away with more humor. And I just, it's something about that. Just, I, I enjoy. So definitely go check out trading places. Always enjoyed it. And it also has, um, why, why am I forgetting her name? Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Sorry. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis has like a small role in this movie. Um, who, who she plays a, a hooker. So <laughs> go watch it. Uh, a few other movies I I was, I was sent, uh, I was sent. That sounds, that sounds incorrect. Anyway, another one I was, this is the holiday version of Sonic the Hedgehog. I own the 4k back there. This is like a re-release and it's a limited collector's edition that came with like a comic book or something inside of it. It's all on Blu-ray. I will probably give this away on Patreon very soon as well. Or, or if you're a YouTube member, I'll probably give that away. So look out for an upcoming giveaway for that. Uh, another thing that I was sent uh, was Westworld, the third season, The New World. I've only seen the first season of Westworld. I enjoy it. Um, I do want to watch the original movie, uh, Westworld, uh, but it's the 4K version. I need to catch up on this and then watch the third season. Uh, I liked the first season of it. I like the concept. Some of it just it starts getting a little bit repetitive for me. Uh, so the Westworld on 4K. And last but certainly not least, it's Chernobyl on 4K, another great HBO series. And by the way, someone earlier asked me, John, what should I watch on HBO Max? Watch Chernobyl, man. This is a great uh, miniseries, which is, I love things based on true events. And this just sh shows how like, brutal and, and awful the, the events of Chernobyl were, where the uh, radioactive mess gets out uh, because the, yeah. Anyway, uh, radiation poison poisoning is no joke. Uh, Chernobyl is a great, um, I, there's a lot of things you pick up on, on in this mini series that I never knew about. Like for instance, they go to like, um, a group of guys who work in coal mines, uh, because they're great at what they do to, to go into Chernobyl and, and basically dig a tunnel. And the, the one episode where they're all digging the tunnel in their underwear around like nuclear radiation. Uh, and they're like, it doesn't matter. And plus it's hot. And I was like, only in Russia. Uh, but just a great, great series. If you haven't seen Chernobyl, I could not recommend this enough. And just the production quality of it, it's truly amazing. And by the way, speaking of Chernobyl, uh, it, it's a place I've always wanted to go. Um, and you can go there, and many people do. Uh, it's You don't want to stay there too long, but I just something about like going to like a ghost town has sort of like an apocalypto feel apocalyptic feel to it would be amazing. All right, guys, uh, let me take a quick break. I will come back and answer all of your questions. And if you have any great juicy questions, get them in now. Uh, I'll answer all of them when I come back. And, uh, so don't go anywhere. I'll be right back after this quick break. If I can, f there it is. Here it is.
And we're back. Hey there, guys. Hope you didn't go anywhere. All right. So let's answer some more questions and then I will wrap up the live stream. So if you have a question, get it in now. I'll do my, I mean, I'm going to answer all of them. Uh, but once again, I don't want to miss any questions. So if you have them, get them in now. And at one point I will tell you to stop asking questions and that point's coming very soon. So hurry up. Don't get scared now. Uh, Mike's movie madness. Hey Mike, uh, thoughts on the news of Deadpool three. Hope you're doing good, man. I'm doing pretty good. How I hope you're doing well too. Um, I did. I, what is the news? I know they got the writers of Bob's burgers, I believe to write the new script and it's alive and it's happening at Disney, which is a good thing. I just hope they really confirm it's rated R. That would be nice. And I believe Hugh Jackman might be in it, or maybe that's a rumor right now is, I don't know if that's the news you're referring to, but yeah, I'm excited to see another Deadpool flick, man. Uh, Night King of one, I watched three Musketeers for the 900th time. Three Musketeers is a great classic uh, Disney movie. I love it. It's it, maybe it's a guilty pleasure by today's standards, but I just love the adventure. I love the Three Musketeers. Um, Charlie Sheen's in the movie. I don't know if that's a selling point anymore. But speaking of that, next week on the uh, new segment, Magical Mystical Movie Memories, I might just be sharing a memory relating to the Three Musketeers. So I will save more info on that until the next time. Tyler Van. Burton's Willy Wonka has an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. Surprised? That right there is the definition of everything wrong with Rotten Tomatoes. That is a soulless, boring, bland, bad movie. Like, ugh, it just doesn't... Like, the first Willy Wonka makes you want to, like, eat candy and, and, I don't know, own an Oompa Loompa or something. The Tim Burton one just makes you depressed. <laughs> Uh, Claudia Rogojohn, did you see the Die Hard commercial with Bruce Willis? The actors who played the terrorist are Argyle came back and it's actually pretty funny. I did not see it. I did not see that. I think I heard about that, but I didn't see it. Now I'm going to need to go watch that. What's the commercial for? I, let me know. Uh, Lone Tiger, uh, what's the most you'd be willing to pay for an out of print movie, whether it's a steel book or not? I assume you really want and love the movie and it's not available anywhere except eBay or somewhere similar. What do you think is a fair price? An out of print movie on steel book or Blu-ray? It just depends how bad I wanted to see the movie and, and how much I really enjoy it. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a, a cheapskate when it comes to buying my physical media. Like, if it's out of print, I really want it. It's, like, one of my favorite movies of all time. I don't know. Maybe, like, 30 bucks, honestly. Like, probably not more than that. And that's the reason I went to pawn shops so often years ago. Because in pawn shops, you can you can almost, like, it's fun because you never know what you're going to find. Like, you can find, like, an out of print steelbook for $3. But on eBay, it's going to be $300. So, yeah, maybe maybe $30. I, I, I don't think I'd spend much more than that. Uh, Ethan Holgate, Bill Gibson's new movie, Fat Man, looks awesome. Yeah, I I think you can watch it now, right? It's it's is isn't it technically out or is it not out yet? Uh, it looks good. I I think it's getting sort of mediocre ratings, uh, which kind of disappoints me. But I I definitely want to check it out. Mel Gibson has a badass killing Santa Claus. Yes, please, I'll take that. Uh, Mahuz Ahmad, thoughts on sixty seven Bonnie and Clyde film? I don't think I've seen the sixty seven Bonnie and Clyde movie. Actually, I know I have not. I, I haven't seen it. Uh, Ismail Iqbal, uh, no question, John, just a donation so you can buy more energy drinks and Sour Patch Kids. Keep up the great vids. Well, thanks, man. Much appreciated, and I will do just that. So thanks, man. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Tyler Van, best and worst Clint Eastwood directed movies. The Mule is probably one of the most recent terrible Clint Eastwood movies. It's just... No purpose, no point, not a very good screenplay and a very odd movie. Like there's a point where Clint Eastwood's just like with Mexican prostitutes for 15 minutes. And it's like, it's just oddly shot and paced. And at the end of the movie, it's just like, so on the nose, Clint, Clint Eastwood's character is like, like you can't buy time. Like the movie shouldn't tell you that it should just, you should get that from watching it. Ah, just a bad movie. One of the best Clint Eastwood movies. Um, I really like Gran Torino. I think that was like the quintessential uh, old man Clint Eastwood movie. Uh, but I also like some of his underrated movies. Like Heartbreak Ridge, I think, is very underrated. And a Clint Eastwood movie not a lot of people have seen. 
All right, guys. So um, if you have any more questions, get them in right now or else no more questions. Please don't ask me any more questions or Super Chats or Streamlabs uh, because I don't want to miss it. And uh, I feel like I've been talking way too long, and I'm sorry for that. Um, so let's answer some questions over here now. Uh, Jurassic Park 3 or Fallen Kingdom? Uh, Jurassic Park 3, any day of the week? Any day of the week, I'd rather watch it. Because it feels at least sort of like a Jurassic Park movie. Fallen Kingdom feels like half the movie takes place in a basement because it does. It just totally just like out of all the ideas you could spend hundreds of millions of dollars on. How did the one where the second half of the movie takes place in a basement? Like, how was that the one? Oh, Jurassic Park fans want to see that shit. And then you had uh, Ted Levine, who plays Buffalo Bill. Oh, you're a big old rat lady. He plays a dinosaur hunter, and his only motivation for existing in the movie is he wants to make a dinosaur necklace. And they dedicate a lot of time to that subplot. Just stupid. So stupid. Uh, I miss your old badass reviews or top tens. I'll do another top 10 or so down the road and I'll do more reviews. I promise. Grand Torino or million dollar baby. Yeah, I agree. Grand Torino million dollar baby to me. It's good. It really is. I just, it's a movie I'll never watch again. I'm just like, how did you fall? Like, how did you fall the worst way possible? How did you do that, Hillary Swank? Like, I <laughs> just got... Um, Shrek, Shrek 3rd or Cars 2? I don't even remember what happened in the third Shrek movie. I literally, I, I, for, I, I don't think I liked the third Shrek movie. I think I had a hard time getting through it. Cars 2 was bad. Do I even remember that movie either? No, Cars 2 was really bad. That's where they had like the, the um, they gave uh, Larry the Cable Guy more screen time and they had the spy car, right? Both are terrible. I, maybe I'll just say Shrek because I think I would rather look at that movie than Cars 2 again. <sighs> uh, Tyler Van Be- oh, didn't we just answer that uh, Claudia Rogojohn Ted Levine was doing a Michael Rooker impression uh, yeah a little bit kind of a rough yeah but Ted Levine it's Ted Levine like the guy's always had like that crazy weird voice uh, that just I, I can't watch a Ted Levine role and not think of Buffalo Bill I just can't do it uh, DJ Run 01, would you rather have a shaved head or long hair? Probably long hair. I don't think I would look good with a shaved head. I would just look like a neo Nazi, and that's not a good look. <laughs> All right, I'm going to answer a few more questions here. Shrek 3 is the one where they search for the boy Arthur, voiced by Timberlake. No, I'm pretty, isn't, no, that's Shrek 2. Isn't Shrek 2 where they have Justin Timberlake voiced and they have Merlin the Wizard in it? I thought that was Shrek 2. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, Niking a a one point break or heat. Also, have you revisited Ronin? No, I have not revisited Ronin. Um, Point break or heat. I, point break's one of my favorite movies of all time. Heat's really great. I, I love heat. Uh, but for me, Point Break was always the one I it sort of resonated with me more. I enjoy the characters a bit more. And just I think the action sequences in Point Break um, are a little bit better than the ones in Heat. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, in Heat, they have the great opening high scene with the tow truck. Then they have that great shootout sequence. And I get it. I do agree. But, you know, the, the one chase scene in Point Break where they have the foot chase scene. That, that to me, just is one of my favorite chase scenes of all time. So it's really hard to top. Both movies are great, but for me, my personal preference is definitely uh, Point Break. Uh, it's Jay Wheeler. Uh, you made me try Sour Patch Kids. Now I'm addicted, and it's 
It's damage control to avoid my teeth falling out so I don't look like a meth head. That is the downside of too many Sour Patch Kids. Uh, you almost have to get to the point where you don't chew them. You just you just suck them till they get so soggy you can swallow them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're they're damn good, aren't they? Do you think Mission Impossible Three is the best in the franchise? No, no, I do not. I I, I think I actually prefer watching uh, Ghost Protocol or um, Fallout more. I think either of those two would be at, at a similar tie for which one I enjoy the most. Do you ever dance like Tom Cruise in Risky Business? Absolutely, every day. Anytime I'm home alone in my underwear, I dance like Tom Cruise. I slide around the house. Yes, absolutely. I, I just uh, give me some tube socks. I'll, I'll dance. Uh, <laughs> Night King 01, best part, of, best part of the chase is when they punted the dog. Oh, yeah, if you're in a chase and you want to stop the guy behind you, you got to throw a dog at him. That's the yes, absolutely. Like when I the first time I saw that, I was like, he threw a dog at him. <laughs> you got to like this movie. And that's when it instantly became my favorite movie of all time. Uh Favorite Warner Brothers movie? I don't know. I mean, I guess, I don't know, The Dark Knight? <laughs> I mean, I, Warner Brothers has put out so many great movies. Uh, I don't even know where to start with that. I mean, The Dark Knight, I guess? I just watched Over the Top yesterday. Well, how do you feel about your life? <laughs> how did it make you feel after you watched that movie? I know how it made me feel instantly better about myself. I just, I want that to hit 4k too. Something about looking at the vascular of Stallone's biceps. That would be great. N- no, it's Shrek. The th- well, then what the hell did they do in Shrek two? I swear. Justin Timberlake was in the second Shrek movie. Uh, Joshua Garrison thoughts on Batman, the animated series. Loved it. I remember coming home every day after school, watching it. It was the reason I was living at the time as a kid. Like that was my only thing to look forward to. Absolutely loved it. It was, and it was so dark, but it was like a kid series. Uh, Anani Moose. How do I make a beast out of myself to get rid of the pain of being a man? You have to transcend yourself to be more than just a man. You have to forget everything. You have to close your eyes and pretend that you're blind. Then you have to open your eyes, consume caffeine, do five push-ups, slap yourself in the face, and go work out. That's what you have to do. I don't know, man. Try those steps and see what happens. If it doesn't work, uh, repeat. <laughs> have you seen Tom Cruise's new stunt from Mission Impossible? No, I have not. Don't is don't they isn't it something to do with space? Isn't that what I think that was the rumor? Something to do with space? I at, at one point Tom Cruise is just gonna like jump off a cliff, die, and then resurrect himself like Jon Snow. I, I what else can the guy do to top himself? Claudio Rogajon, you see the new Tom and Jerry trailer? Kill me now. I I didn't watch the new Tom and Jerry trailer. I'm, I guess I'm just not a big fan of Tom and Jerry. I never was like, I get it. Uh, but I'm just, I didn't need a new Tom and Jerry animated show or movie. I guess I, I don't know anything about it. I didn't see the new trailer. <laughs> a not a noni moose. Perfect answer. Well, thank you. Shrek two had the fairy godmother and human Shrek. Did it? I, I thought in Shrek 2, they went to like the Hollywood version of Shrek land and things happened. And then Justin Timberlake was in it. Maybe I'm combining Shrek 2 and 3 together. Maybe I am. Do you own Batman the animated series? It's available on Blu-ray. I know it's available. I never bought it. I remember it came out. I wanted to get it. Never did. One day I'll get it when the price is right. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this live show. Um, As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the questions. I hope I gave you fulfilling answers. And if you could, before you go, 
Uh, give the live show a like. It does, once again, help with the stupid YouTube algorithm, and I do much appreciate it. Um, it's really all I want from you. Um, but, yeah, the Super Chats and all the donations are just so appreciated and such an added bonus. You guys are awesome. And I should – what is it? Thanks, Thanksgiving is next week. So if I don't see you guys before Thanksgiving, well, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you guys have a, a great Thanksgiving holiday and uh, enjoy some turkey. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, well – Order a pizza and watch a movie. Either way. <laughs> Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, and, oh, we got one more question here. And I, nope, I, I answered that. Okay, good. I don't want to miss a, miss a question. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and have a good night.